If you've ever picked up a snowboard, you've almost certainly dreamt of bottomless turns on snow-covered peaks. Conditions so perfect that you might have mistaken it for riding in the clouds. Your mind doesn't deceive you. It was merely calling you to this place. This is Baldface, home to the second stop of the 2022 Natural Selection Tour and one of snowboarding's most coveted locations. It started in Jackson Hole, where sheer will overcame variable snow conditions, where up-and-coming rookies and seasoned pros alike introduced themselves to the world or cemented their legacies. Now, the kinder side of nature rewards us with a fresh playing field. Scary Cherry, a steep, relentless, and foreboding course riddled with naturally enhanced features, both enticing and intimidating. At Baldface, the task at hand is the reward itself. But only two can claim victory, and only the best will continue on the road to Alaska. This is the TAE Natural Selection at Baldface. There's nothing quite like the magic of the Kootenai Mountains in British Columbia, and that is why it is stop two. This is the TAE Natural Selection Bald Face Lodge event. Hey, everybody. My name is Salema Masakella. Seated next to me is Mary Walsh. We also have Tom Monterosso, a.k.a. T-Bird, in the field, and we are so excited because this place, Bald Face Lodge, the Kootenai's, one of the greatest playgrounds in the entire landscape of snowboarding, Mary. You said it, it does not get more magical than this when it comes to a powder haven nestled in the mountains of British Columbia. From the beautiful town of Nelson, it's about a 15 minute helicopter ride that transports you into just magic. This is actually the view that you have as you're coming in to land at Baldface. You're just under 7,000 feet elevation when you're nestled among the trees at Baldface Lodge. And really, you feel like you are on the edge of the world when you are there. It is a cat operation uh, where people come from all over the world to ride this terrain. Here at this event, we are grateful to ski -Doo because there's so much equipment to get in and out for the second stop of natural selection that they are helping our athletes and our staff uh, make this event possible. And our men's and women's winners here at Baldface will each receive their own brand new ski -Doo. How dope is that, Mary? That is so sick because having this kind of tool is so integral for all of these riders throughout the entirety of their seasons as they explore just a plethora of various terrains. And speaking of terrain, Baldface is just absolutely massive. 32,000 acres is the expanse that this takes up, loaded with treed glades, bowls, and ridge lines that connect everything all together. And like the Natural Selection Tour, the Baldface Lodge is designed to be in tune with the environment. It is a wonderful place uh, to hang out and reflect on the riding you've been doing. As you see, some riders plotting their lines. No plastic at Baldface Lodge, so it's Yeti bottles for everyone, and we are grateful to them. And the staff at Baldface Lodge are like family. And this toast right here, honoring a fallen guide by the name of Nile. 
Bald Phase truly is a one-of-a-kind snowboarder's paradise. Founded by Jeff Pensiero, the lauded guide John Buffery, and legendary snowboarder Craig Kelly, when they created this place, they made a foundation for community, creativity, and really celebrating the heart of snowboarding. It's my favorite place on earth. I'm not gonna lie to you, Mary. But before we get started here at Bald Face, let's take a look at how we got here at our first stop in Jackson Hole. Good morning, good day, good evening, snowboard fans around the world. Welcome to the naturally enhanced terrain party that is Yeti Natural Selection, stop one of our 2022 season. We started this event with 24 riders on day one, but there can only be one champion. It is go time. Jared Elston, the first person to go through. We're gonna see if Craven can force a tie break. Forstein Horgmo here is in go mode. Thought Travis in the tiebreaker in the opening round. Can he do it again? Blake Paul. What? Nickel bang on course. Ben Ferguson is here to win. Not able to ride out clean, but continuing on. Sage Gotzenberg looking to close the door. What a matchup. It's been an honor to call it. Um, two heats. First heat will be Elena Height versus Hanna Beeman. Congratulations, Elena. Robin Van Jin versus Marion Herity. Robin Van Jin to the finals. All right, Elena Height dropping in for the first run of women's finals. This is it. Winner takes all. Robin Van Jin trying to take home the win. Robin Van Jin would like a say in this outcome. Oh, here's Elena, congratulations. To win this event doesn't even really feel real. <laughs> what a story, Jared Elston facing Sage Kotzenberg, about to battle it out for the number one spot. Sage, cab nine. This is what Travis Rice wanted when he created this event. Jared Elston is on course. Double backflip. Coming for you now. Yep, no, you got it. This is the one contest he's never won, and he wants to win it. And in switch, and he goes cab 900. Sage Kotzenberg wants to end it now. Jared Elston, double wildcat, backside 720, and he stomps it. This is, this is incredible. <laughs> Just shy. So we got ourselves a champion, Sage Kotzenberg. So well. All of you at home watching around the world, this one is for you. Thanks for hanging out and watching the best snowboarders on the planet. We will see you in Canada. And in Canada, we are to make history. In Jackson, we made history at Natural Selection by launching a set of NFTs that really aim to build further community uh, to make people feel like they are a part of the Natural Selection Tour. And here again at Bald Face Lodge, we are doing it again, two new exclusive NFTs that you can find at naturalselectiontour.com. Join the club. In the same way that the Natural Selection Tour is pushing past the expected when it comes to a snowboarding contest, this is the same philosophy that is imbued into these NFTs. The sense of community, the idea of something tangible behind a non-fungible token. During the Jackson Hole stop, we dropped the foundation token and among the individuals who joined the community and purchased that drop is Biscuit. He is the winner of the Snowcat Golden Ticket, one of the owners of a foundation token, and he is here at Baldface for the entirety of this week with everyone. And he'll be getting to ride the terrain here at Baldface, which when you look at this expanse, it is just freedom. But that freedom comes with important stakes. As snowboarders, we're really drawn to exploration and like looking into these new places and the backcountry provides a wealth of that. A little bit on if you're caught in an avalanche. 
Very important that we're watching each other. If we see something cracking around someone, we get on our pipes as loud as we can. We yell avalanche. When you enter the backcountry, you're taking a risk for sure. You need to know what you're doing before you go out there. It's really important. So the backcountry is something to take not like easy. I mean, you have to take it seriously. I think if you're gonna look into stepping into the backcountry, you know, take an avalanche course. They're a couple hundred bucks and they can honestly save your lives or save somebody else's. All the things that go into having a safe day out in the backcountry, um, doing your beacon checks before you go out, uh, just talking about the weather, knowing what to expect, what the hazards might be in the snowpack before we go out, all helps us understand what we're getting into and how to ride the safest and the best to have the most confidence, so. All right, try and see for usage. If everyone can pull out their probe and shovel, this is a good time to check that everything is working. We spend about a half an hour to 40 minutes in the morning on the first morning where everybody practices with their transceiver. We bury a beacon where you don't know where it is, and then we make sure everybody is supported in finding that beacon. All right, well, we got a few buried. We're gonna kind of send you folks one at a time to search for them. You know, you just wanna have it on the front of your mind at all times and make sure you're being safe. Arm yourself with the proper avalanche gear. So how we probe is at our low signal. We're gonna put our first strike, obviously sinking the probe all the way in. And uh, go out with people who know what they're doing and, you know, have each other's backs. That's better, that's perfect, you guys. Luckily, Baldface and Pat Moore and Jeff and the crew teach avalanche course that I try to take every year up here before the winter and kind of best get myself prepared for if anything was to happen. We are thankful to backcountry.com for that piece. You can never be safe enough when playing in the backcountry because really when it comes to conditions and snow conditions, it doesn't require snowfall. There are so many different weather factors that can change the consistency of the snow, and especially when we're looking for a go day to compete. Exactly. Earlier this week, we had negative 40 degree temperatures and lots of wind. That created this very dense wind buffed snowpack at the top of Scary Cherry. Not the kind of conditions that you really want to ride. So we waited a few days. It was clear and cold for about three days before now, which allowed the snow to refacet and some of those layers to become more cohesive. Now, the top of Scary Cherry is still fairly crispy. It's a bit wind buffed, but the snow just down below is softer, smoother, and that bald face powder we were waiting for. Which leads us to today's conditions for competition, what we are looking for. Blue skies, five to 10 mile an hour winds, 17 degrees Fahrenheit, minus eight Celsius. This is a beautiful day to go snowboarding here at Bald Face Lodge and Natural Selection. So let's do that, shall we? The men's and the women's brackets are as such, nine men that will go into a four-man semifinal, leading to a final. And for the women, it is ranked five riders that will lead into a two-woman final and then will crown champions, respectively. We are so excited to unveil a new natural selection-specific judging criteria called Credo. Credo is your guiding beliefs, your principles, and it stands for creativity, risk, execution, difficulty, and overall assessment of your top to bottom run. That means when the judges are watching every rider descend, they're looking for that flow, speed, control, and that's a really big deal on this course because Scary Cherry is a behemoth. They don't call it Scary Cherry for nothing. Look at the pitch of this aspect, this northeast facing aspect here in our GoPro course preview. Special thanks to GoPro for their Enduro battery that performs so well in the cold in these conditions. It is steep, it is deep, it has lots of natural features, but as you can see, also man-made ones which amplify an already challenging aspect. It's that naturally enhanced terrain, and it's incredible because it is a year-round effort to make Scary Cherry ready for today. The lumberjacks, legitimate lumberjacks, who come in in the summer to help enhance the terrain. And then, of course, the bald face guiding staff has literally been watching this face since the very first snowfall, mitigating with their avalanche control techniques to make sure that these are the safest conditions that we could have and the best conditions for contest day. This is the culmination of really working together with Mother Nature.
We're so grateful for that dedication to safety because even a low avalanche risk day is a risk. Well, you mentioned lumberjacks playing a role in the building of the course. Why not incorporate some lumberjack culture into our seating event? In Jackson Hole, of course, we use a randomizer. No randomization here. The riders actually had to play lumberjack games in order to pick their seating position, which of course means more fun. The lumberjack games were all about the bonus skills, combining elements of things that you need to exist within the backcountry as a snowboarder with some axe throwing and log sawing. Yeah, as you see here, gotta go and find a buried transceiver, then go and saw a log and hammer a nail into it, then throw an axe. Mind you, this is happening in the cold. Exactly, and this whole thing was timed so however long it took you to complete all of these tasks determined in what order you got to pick where you dropped on finals day, part of the strategy of this entire event. So Dustin Craven was the fastest male and he elected to drop first, as did Hannah Beeman, who had the fastest time on the women's side. They set the tone. As we look at the men's field, I mean, Sage Kotzenberg jumps out at me, Mary, with that momentum coming in off of Jackson Hole, as well as Torstein Horgmo and Jared Elson, who did not perform like he's a rookie here. Mark McMorris, we can't forget his performance at Jackson last year, obviously making his return to the tour after being at the Olympics. Oh, I completely agree. And then you have Dustin Craven, who is one of snowboarding's favorite dark horses, dropping first. I mean, five of these riders have never ridden this course in competition before. Dustin, Blake, Ben, Mickle, and Jared. But it's anyone's game when it comes to this because the conditions vary so much. And it was really almost 10 years ago that the other four rode Scary Cherry in this way. Yeah, so basically, even Stevens across the board. Yes, exactly. And as we look at the women's list, these five riders are making history, Mary. Yes, today is the very first time that women snowboarders are dropping in to compete on Scary Cherry. Hannah Beeman will kick things off. Robin Van Jen, Elena Height, the winner of this year's first stop at Jackson, and Zoe sadowski Sinnott, who was the winner of Jackson in 2021. These are five women ready to showcase not only what they're bringing to this stop of the tour, but representing for women snowboarding as a whole. And when we come back, we will drop in with our first riders here at the TAE Natural Selection Balls Face Lodge. Got to step down into this nice, cold, sun-protected chute. I hit a pillow launcher at the bottom of it. Should be good. Resin is dropping in three, two, one. Resin on part, on part. Welcome back to the TAE Natural Selection at Bald Face Lodge. Bluebird skies and we are going snowboarding, Mary. Our first rider is Dustin Craven. 
playing kind of a home game as he lives nearby in Revelstoke, British Columbia, originally from Calgary. Last year won that best video part here at Baldface Valhalla. Let's hear more from this man. You can see the crisp air in his lungs ready to go, Dustin Craven. Um, it kind of just like relieves the pressure a tiny bit. I mean, the whole top of Scary Cherry is pillow riding in a sense and that kind of stuff. But I mean, no matter what, when you get to the course, it's just humbling. I don't think any snowboarder's truly ready for that the first time they step over and kind of like have a look and like, oh man. But uh, yeah, I think it's any snowboarder that spends time in BC kind of definitely has a foot up here. Um, well, Jack Jackson's a little bit more manufactured park style. And here's kind of just giant manufactured diving boards. And then there are uh, tables and stuff at the bottom. Um, the course here is a lot, like probably twice as long. And uh, the top is probably twice as steep. So um, in Jackson, you kind of just like go and it's one feature at a time. You kind of set your speed. Whereas here, I feel like you drop in and next thing you know, you're going 60 feet by accident and miss like, you're like, oh, I'm gonna hit this, this, and this. And you take off and you hit this and that's it. Accidentally going 60 feet, that's not a statement that mortals make. No, I don't think I could sit here right now if I'd ever done that in my life. <laughs> it just puts into perspective that on this course, it doesn't take much for you to be flying as Dustin Craven in the sunshine is starting us off here at Baldface Lodge. And you can really get a sense of just how steep that top section of Scary Cherry is, even at this perspective viewpoint right now. And here, as Dustin gets a little bit lower from that kind of more wind-packed area, getting a little back one off of that into that bald face blower. And look at, this guy's making switch powder turns that, you know, for anyone else going regular, they'd be like, those are the best turns of my life. And that's the reward right now as he heads into this little diving board and a cab five lands that, ready to line up for this next feature down below. Nice big front side 720. Lance seated down. Ooh, and just getting a little bucked on that 180. But you can see too how much how much expanse Dustin has covered already. He mentioned this is about two times as long as a Jackson run, and we know how gassed the competitors were at the end of those runs. You see that gorgeous shimmer of that bald face snow in the air. And here we take a second look at Dustin Craven's Hell for Leather opening up the entire course for everyone here on finals day. Yeah, that cab five was a nice setup into this front side 720. And as you look at the lip of this takeoff, it's not really set up to give him that much pop, an ambitious front side seven. And he goes down a little bit on the butt check, but holds it together and rides away from that. You can definitely see the strategy that he's looking for and kind of setting the tone for today. The seal has been broken on Scary Cherry and a score of 77 for Craven. 77! First! Woo! Uh, it's like the snow over there is amazing. Yeah. In first place for now, as we head back to the top, and Sage Kotzenberg, the 2014 Olympic gold medalist, coming in with big momentum from his win at Jackson Hole. But will it be an advantage as we talk about the nuances of Scary Cherry? Yeah, taking the win in Jackson was super special. Definitely was on my goal list. And coming here, definitely nice to have that confidence rolling in, but this course is completely different than Jackson Hole. Uh, it's definitely a lot more free riding, uh, not as slope style oriented. So we'll see, we'll see if that plays over here, you know? Jackson definitely wasn't the best snow conditions, but it is what it is, you gotta ride it. Um, snow conditions up here are definitely a lot better. It's very much winter. It got a little wind affected and we're looking at the best uh, day to do it right now. Uh, it's really cold, so it could suck some of that wind slab out of the snow. Um, I don't know if it'll be, you know, the best just air off anything, but it'll be it'll be pretty rad and I think pretty sporty to get down 
no matter how deep it is up there. So it'll it'll be interesting to see what everyone's runs are are doing. I like that that term sporty, and it, he makes a great point. Even if the snow is perfect, it's not like this thing is not scary. It's called scary cherry. Exactly. From where Sage and all the competitors are dropping right now, you cannot see directly below what you're dropping into. You see far below you the valley floor, but it's called a convex roller where you actually have to ride over it to see what you're hitting next. No matter how great of a snowboarder you are, it still gives you that feeling like you get at an amusement park on a roller coaster. Totally, and Sage comes to this with 10 years of backcountry experience. When he first set foot on this course, he was a wild card, a relative rookie in the backcountry, and by that giant backside 360, you can really see how he has evolved as a rider in that time. And Sage just riding with such confidence and control. When Sage turns it on, he really turns it on, and going frontside 360 off of that hit that Dustin Craven set the line for. And just a big, really big frontside air poking it out there as he heads toward the bottom section of the course. Well, we definitely had a feeling that the momentum could play a factor. Confidence is high for Sage. <laughs> and worth noting too that while these first two riders have made this look so smooth and fluid, this is a beast of a course and they make it look easy, but it is anything but. Dude, the snow's great. I love the way he started this off, this big, confident backside 360, and then using that next hit as a little transition. And I love that popper hitting that little kind of man-made pillow right there, opening up that feature on the course. This is Sage really getting his footing. He looks confident, he looks smooth, but he has another gear for that second run, I'm sure. and just poking out the grab, going deceptively large right there. Way to fire it up. Mutual admiration in the finish line as an 83.66 puts Sage into first place. And as Mary pointed out, he's got more where that came from. Wow, you really saved it off that one, hey? Dude. Our next rider from Trondheim, Norway, is a legend in the sport of snowboarding, Torstein Horgmo. This guy rode in this event when it was called Ultra Natural way back in 2013. He has some perspective on Scary Cherry and his relationship with this face. Um, I came into Jackson with uh, really no expectations and I had a goal of just making it through. That was that was make it to day two, and then and then and then be satisfied. Uh, so that took a lot of pressure off, um, making it to finals day and and riding against Travis. And at that point, I didn't really care, right? So which might be why I I beat Travis too. <laughs> I was just like, let's see what happens here. But yeah, I love this place. I love Baldface. I really wanted to come back here and have the opportunity to ride here again and. Uh, get to some deeper snow, which uh, it seems like we're finding. And Scary Cherry is one of those faces where it's really hard to scope it and uh, get a good look at it. So you're and staring at photos, right? You're, you're you can only see so much of what it's really going to be like. Uh, and then so so it's definitely intimidating. Most of the run is convex too, so it's hard to like peek over and and really take a look at your your line. That's one of the biggest things to, to overcome, I think, on Scary Cherry is, is just, just, you gotta, you gotta just go. There's this Zen energy to Torstein that um, I think really informs the style of his snowboarding and, and his approach. And we're about to see that. I completely agree. He is such a master of both the physical and the mental side of snowboarding. Like you said, the zen-like approach, and he's strong. So we see that perfectly executed backside 360 off of that top hit. Just very, very smooth, classic Torstein. As he goes into a straight air on that jump feature and heads into that kind of softer snow right here in the midsection of the course. You know what I love about this 
this face is that it doesn't take much. You know, a small jump on this pitch feels like a big park jump. Yes, yeah, you can see that lip is deceptive looking because it really sends that frontside 360 that Torstein does very deep. You don't need much, just like you said. And just taking a straight air as he approaches last section, but it looks like will he get one more hit in? And just a smooth back 180 and holding on right there as he cruises into the finish zone. Who doesn't love a well-executed backside 180? Started lower in the seating at Jackson and taking advantage of the early start here at Baldface Lodge. So taking a second look at the Norwegian powerhouse that back 360 of the top, that angle really gives you an idea of really how far he is going into that steep landing. And here we have the front side 360, backing that up and landing really clean. And then into a nice front side air and landing perfectly in the transition, just touching down effortlessly. And into that final backside 180 at the bottom of the course. Little hand touch there, but holding on and riding away. Oh my God. Nice work, dude. dude. You made it look good. Man, good like, boys. Look at those sloughs. Like, it's in the, like when I turned up and I saw my slough paint, I was like, no way. Wow. 70.33 for Torstein, who There's literally says protection. thank you to the mountain. <laughs> what are we doing, waiting for scores or something? scores right there. Oh. Oh man, that was powder. Dude, yeah. it's good to go in there. Riders are fired up on the snow and that is a good sign for what is to come as young Jared Elston from Bend, Oregon, who came into Jackson and made some noise. Yeah, in the, in the final with Sage and Jackson Hole, it was, it was just fun at the end of the day. Like all the pressure was off the shoulders. Like, all right. Getting second is already insane. Like, whatever, just have fun. Go snowboard, try something big. People are watching. Scary Cherry is definitely going to be interesting. It's not quite as friendly as Jackson. It's not straightforward like Jackson is. Not that Jackson is straightforward, but like there's clear lanes. Whereas this, you kind of look up and there's like pillow here, pillow here. Like, ooh, does this line up with that? And this, and it looks a lot different than the super and ultra natural events. Um, so it's not like there's, that much to look back on as far as like what people's lines were, you know? And unlike Jackson Hole, Mary, you know, the course inspection didn't involve getting to walk the course. No, the riders really had to uh, look at it from afar and utilize photographic and video footage. I mean, the closest they could get to this was riding along the yep. side about two football fields away and looking over. This kid, Jared Elston, rides with power. Just starting out with a really casual back three in that more kind of uh, packed section of the course and launching a giant straight air just to the deep end right there. And front side 360 off the side of that diving board as he heads to the rider's right section of the course to find that nice turns and he finds it. There's nothing like that beautiful rooster of a finely placed powder turn. Exactly, and there's plenty for the taking here once you get down past that top section of Scary Cherry. And the indie poke into kicking up some fluff on that kicker. Oh my God! <laughs> Massive front side 360. Jared Elson came to play. Wow. And yeah, backing that up with another front 360 a little bit of a revert, but that was massive. I said he had power. Sheesh. Looking back at Ben Oregon's prodigal son coming in hot in his first showing here, opening things up with a 360 and a beautiful, beautiful toe side turn. Look at this thing. Just enormous on that front side 360. You can see how far down his track starts right there. Yeah, that was not an accidental 60 feet. Oh my goodness. A couple panic 
front threes. <laughs> yeah. That was beast though. Yeah, your last one is fucking game. Did you do two, three front threes? Three front threes, count them. That's dope. How to do a frontside 360 at various Ooh, size massive, and degree oh by Jared Elston with a score sick, of an 80. Man. Imagine if he throws in just a little bit of variance where that score could go. Completely. He had the amplitude, he had the control and the style, but the judges do want to see that variation. But he knows that. You heard him when he came down and was yeah, talking sick. to the riders. Yeah, three good. front side yeah, threes. But that's foundational. He'll be able to build on that in his second go. As we take a look at uh, scores here, Sage Kostenberg with that 83.66, Elston with an 80, and then Craven and Horgmo, 77 and 73.33, respectively. So that gives the remaining five riders a bit of scale and what they need to do to get those scores into the 80s, maybe even up into the 90s. For Blake Hall, stop one in Jackson Hole was a home game. Now he finds himself on Scary Cherry. I wonder what the differences are for him. It's a little bit steeper, obviously, a little bit longer. I think you can kind of take a nice traversing line down the course um, and have carry a lot more speed, which Jackson doesn't have. But uh, yeah, steeper drops, maybe some bigger kind of man-made wooden features. Uh, course was looking great on inspection day yesterday, full pow on our inspection runs. And uh, there's a little bit of wind last night and this morning that might've kind of packed things up, but we're hoping for uh, some better conditions kind of later in the week and some better snow and warmer temps. Uh, this course is a lot more vast, uh, a lot more features. You can kind of take a traversing line if you wanted to carry more speed into features. Um, Kind of man-made, more like just straight drop-offs and a little bit blind from the top, so it's not kind of set out in front of you. I think Jackson's a little bit more kind of natural terrain park, and here's kind of, you know, bridges the gap between Alaska and Jackson. And it literally is the bridge between Jackson and Alaska, as that Good. is our last stop. Blake Paul rides with what I like to call aesthetic horse. He is light-footed, he is graceful. There is a spontaneity in his snowboarding so that even if you are not a snowboarder and you see him, you're like, oh, that looks beautiful. That is the perfect phrase to describe his style of riding. He literally dances with the mountain. It's really gorgeous to watch. And it's contemplative. You can see him really finding his way to that unopened feature and just grabbing Indy for a little hook out there on that first, first hit. Tapping the pillow. Find a little bit of that more packed powder on the landing right there and regaining speed. As he had mentioned, the ability to do so in this course, so key to finding your own creative line as he heads down to the next section. Yeah, you see the way he makes turns, that nice knock kneed style as he comes in switch here, switch backside 180. And just again, like you said, can't emphasize enough his style. Just so lofty with that back three tail grab. Did he even leave the ground? <laughs> Not sure, but it was beautiful. And going for that front five right there. Yeah, somehow managed to not get stopped in his tracks on that landing, but that was that was a gorgeous run. As we take a second look at Blake's run, starting off strong, hitting that pillow at the top and then going switch back one off of that kicker. This angle really lets you see just how deep they're taking it. It looks almost like a totally different jump than the perspective angle. And then that tail grab backside 360, the way he is so precise about finding transition, it really does look like he never left the ground. He's got such unbridled finesse and improvisational control. It's incredible. Improvisational control, you should trademark that. Love the mutual admiration amongst all these riders and a 50. I didn't see that coming. I didn't either. 
I would have placed him a good deal higher with that. I think the switchback one and that 360, but perhaps he didn't hit quite as many features as some of the other riders. I mean, you can see too from his body language, he is surprised as well. Well, fortunately, he gets another run and he will be riding with purpose as we go back to Bend, Oregon with Ben Ferguson. Second place in both Alaska and Jackson Hole. Last season, he loves Scary Cherry. He's someone who likes to go fast. Let's get his perspective. Yeah, so pre event, it was definitely like kind of shook. The course is crazy. The first day we got a scope, but there's so many options. It's a little bit overwhelming. Um, but had a couple lines I was thinking about trying and then definitely like lots of nerves the night before. Was having crazy dreams. Um, but yeah, like super excited, had a good plan. And then I guess it got pushed. So we're chilling, got to look at it again and feeling better now. Uh, this course is way different than the Jackson Hole course. It's a uh, much steeper pitch up at the top, kind of some blind rollers in there. You're not exactly sure where you're entering into the line. Um, and yeah, it's a different beast. It's steeper, it's bigger, it's probably longer. There are a bunch of hits in it. Um, maybe it's a little less freestyle, a little more like line riding. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to give it a whirl. You don't get any like extra unnecessary flair of sauce from Ben when he's describing snowboarding. No, and I think that's just like his riding itself. It's it's powerful, it's strong, and it's it's beautiful in how it's economical. And you see him right here opening up with a half cab at the top of the course. As he makes his way down to a second hit. Backside 360 and holding on to the landing in that little bit of packed snow up there. Love that the riders are miked so you get a sense of how they're feeling with a nice big method. As Ben is flying into this left hand side of the course. Look at the speed. Just opening up an entirely new section too. Finding a really natty hit and going deep. Back to back straight airs as he comes to the guts. And just like he said, you know, this was gonna be a little bit less freestyle for him. As he goes down on that last hit, he definitely treated it more like a big mountain line. Yeah, and I think that's where some of the beauty of Ben's riding is, is you can kind of put him anywhere and he's gonna find a really creative and interesting way down. Looking again at his run, taking a line less traveled. We see that backside 360 into that top section where we know the snow is a little crispier and a picturesque Ferguson method right there. Frontside air off the first hit and backing that up with a second backside air. Moving pretty quick down this course. And sending it into the guts of Scary Cherry at the bottom. So definitely feel like that was a bit of a foundational kind of exploring from Ben on that. Thanks, bro. The judges liked the speed, they liked the attack, they liked the way he went cross court across the mountain, and he gets far. an 82. There is no natural selection if not for the vision of one of the greatest snowboarders of all time in Travis Rice. He believes in evolution and consistency and growth, and he's taken that approach to this face here at Scary Cherry. Um, it feels awesome to be back on this venue, a venue that, you know, we put so much time, effort, love, passion into for the events in 2012 and 2013. You know, with the new format and the new approach that we're running this year, it's great to be back. It's such a dynamic venue. You know, Jeff Pensiero and the entire Baldface family, you know, they were so supportive of the first two events that we did here and have continued to be, you know, really true partners to the Natural Selection Tour. And, you know, working back to getting here this year, uh, it's been a long and awesome process. And, I mean, yeah, Baldface, it's, it's a dream place to go riding. Everybody loves it up here. A Yeti ambassador 
somehow still riding at this level at 39 years of age and still doing it with with so much love for the sport, not just for himself, but for the entirety of snowboarding. I really think that that's the thing that people miss is that he's in it for the entirety of the sport. Oh, completely. Travis has always taken that into consideration from his movies to his events to his role in art and community. It's it's incredible. And big backside 360 on the top section. Oh, and a really nice back one right there. So now he's making some switch turns down the middle portion of the course. It's so hard to watch someone ride switch faster than I'll ever ride in real life. <laughs> I feel you on that. Beautiful switch backside 540. It's so intriguing to watch Travis ride these courses that he was so obviously instrumental in creating and see how he interprets them and the creativity he brings. Looks like he might have gotten a little stopped up in that powder cloud at the bottom, but really strong run. Love that butter in the middle right there. And taking a second look at Travis's run, backside 360 off the top of the course. Again, looking at Travis, he has that familiarity with it, but also this is how he's imagining the momentum of the event to run, that kind of creativity and technical prowess. She's sporty. That's where it goes. You made that look good. Uh, see that Dekine rice huh? vest? Wouldn't you like to have your hands on one of those? Oh, big score. The highest score of the day so far, an 88. Completely not planned I run. Yeah. I did that first air and was gonna go right and just started going mock Louie. Yeah. Well, that puts into context the speed. If even Travis Rice finds himself lost and had to improvise, fortunately, improvisation is what he does for a living, and now he has the highest score. As we look at our 2021 Natural Selection Tour champion, arguably the people's champion of this tour, Mikkel Bang. Uh, in Jackson Hole, the snow was was very difficult. I think we had about five inches of snow on top of very firm. Um, so that was a challenge. And then coming into Bald Face, uh, you know, the chances are, you know, that we would get some really good snow. So we're just going to have to wait and see what we'll get. Oh, when you're standing on top of Scare Terry, it's, uh, you know, when you first get there, the first time you look down and you kind of get overwhelmed, you know, because there are just so many features everywhere. And uh, yeah, it definitely takes a little bit of time before you can, you know, figure out where to go. <laughs> My mindset going into the big day is kind of like, I always try to uh, just have fun, you know? And uh, that's my way of kind of kind of staying calm and uh, yeah, just having fun and trying to um, yeah do my do my best. <laughs> As we know from his track record, unafraid to just attack the course with all the joy. He is also the fun leader off of the mountain. He definitely has the the, the spirit of natural selection award goes to Mikkel. Completely and setting up with a straight air. <gasps> oh my goodness, going so deep on that backside 360 and rewarding himself with some powder turns now before this naturally enhanced wall jam, kicking a method. Wow, that was massive. Yeah, that 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 arrested my development. <laughs> And popping a front 180 off of that lip. And a switch backside. It's like a little double poke there. Yeah, it, it just was a whole lot of gorgeous. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Well, if you wanted to know why Mikkel got third in Jackson and was the champ last year, there's your reminder. Woo! Yeah, Mikkel. Gorgeous run from the Norwegian. That was just, I'm still flashing back to that first hit. That was enormous. 
That's what we came for. I'm excited to see the recap and look at that side view of that. Oh, that was crazy. And another look at Mikkel's run right now. Mm -hmm. Just going so big, landing on the tail and pulling through. He is so strong as a snowboarder. That was just massive. Kicking out a method. And then, of course, that double poke switch backside 180 before he wrapped things up. That was a banner run from Mikkel. And you put it so perfectly, Slemma. That is why he was the champion last year. He comes to play. I wonder how the judges we got it, right? will uh, look at that. I think that little bit of a wheelie coming out of the landing on that backside three, which you didn't see in real time because he was going so fast, is what kept him from taking the lead. But Oh, my God. That was amazing. Next up, the one that they call Sparky, Mark McMorris from Canada. You didn't see him in Jackson Hole because he <laughs> yeah. was in China competing at the Olympics, but his love for this event is proven by the fact that he made sure his first stop was here at Ballface Lodge. The atmosphere here is really good, everyone. It's more into big mountain riding and backcountry snowboarding, but just nice to switch it up and enjoy the mountains. Very excited to ride powder. Happy to be here. Last season, purple was the color for Mark McMorris. Now, giving us a little bit variations on blue. I like it. And opening up with a backside 360 as he finds his way to this second lip and hitting that pillow line. Ooh, back one off of that. How in the world he was able to adjust and save for that? Because I don't think he meant to hit that so hard. I think you are right. It almost looked like he kind of uh, softened a little buck off of that. The manner in which this, this guy can adapt from a slope style course into the backcountry is seamless. Yeah, his body awareness and air awareness is just unfathomable. You see there with that backside 360 and pulling left into, oh, looking to go back to back, but just looks like he came a little short on the landing and got bucked right there. That was incredible though, just to go backside 360 and make that quick left hand turn. It looked like you said he came up just short. There was a little lip that sent him off of that landing that he came up short on. Yeah, because that was very clean in the air. And looking back on his run once more in this recap, backside 360 to start things off, and it looks like he just is a little bit short on that pillow line, but just turns it into a back 180, which is, you know, just Margaret Morris adjusting to the situation. Anyone else would have panicked and screamed for help, not Mark. And frontside 360 landing very easy right there. setting himself up for a beauty of a toe side turn. That snow looks gorgeous there. And a mighty front three, but that's where it looks like he just hit a little bit of like a natural knuckle that kind of kicked him. Oh, nice wow. work, dude. Yeah. Seriously. Oh, I, uh, I was, was played it a little. Could have played you it harder left or harder one. right on that. Thank you. You guys all ripped. No, you ripped. No, you ripped, bro. You gotta love it. I think for Mark, this run gives him a lot to look forward to on, on his second. A 73.33. So yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a good score relative to what went down and Mark's gonna carry that forward. Well, this first run too is a bit about the, the recon, getting that intel, finding the speed, kind of familiarizing yourself with some of the options. As all of these guys have said, there is so many possibilities. There's so much terrain on this that they're kind of doing a reconnaissance mission 
yeah, not and, number one. And as we had heard so many other riders say, like, that convex rolling, no matter what you've got in your head, you can't see anything until you're in it. As we see after run one, Travis Rice there at the top, followed by Mickle Bang and Sage Kotzenberg. But this second run, anything is possible. Totally. These first goes during men's qualifiers, they have set the bar for what is going to be rewarded with this credo system. It's that technical prowess, that sending it big, the amplitude, but also that creativity and being able to work in tandem with the face of Scary Cherry. We saw Travis Rice being rewarded for that butter in addition to switch carves, Dustin Craven as well. And then of course, going massive like Mickle Bang and Sage did. Yeah, I, I would call run one like sound check and run two, we're getting into the show. Yes, completely. We are now entering the next gear, but the first, the first layer put down by all these riders is incredibly impressive. I mean, where do you go from here? We have the women standing up at top, ready to drop in for their first runs. Well, no doubt. They're excited at that glimpse of what the, what the possibility is on this course from the men. And it's gonna be really interesting for someone like a Marion Herdy especially, who likes to go fast and has that ability to have control in these conditions, how she'll be able to utilize this course will be amazing. Totally. You know, one of the interesting things about the snowboarding culture is that it's the endemic snowboarding brands made by and, and run by snowboarders that keep the, the culture and industry alive, but especially the riders. And so as a result, we have the Natural Selection Tour Industry Alliance. The Industry Alliance is essentially a partnership with Natural Selection that allows for access and collaboration with endemic brands. This whole competition tour was founded by the athletes, Travis and all of the other riders. And so it's critical for us to have these endemic brands a part of this journey that we're going on. Bread and butter of snowboarding is built in a pretty small industry. The Natural Selection Tour is such a breath of fresh air for our sport right now. And having those core endemic companies come in and support us and support the tour, uh, I think is really important. These Industry Alliance brands are, you know, the foundational sponsors to a lot of these athletes. In turn, those Industry Alliance brands also, you know, work with us on the tour. The tour works with the riders. So it really is this very communal relationship that, that all three entities have between the rider, the tour, and the brands themselves that are part of the Industry Alliance. It's so important for a contest like Natural Selection to include those brands because they really are what feeds the industry and feeds the riders and keeps the sport going at every level. I think a great example is Hanna Beeman and Ride. Ride Snowboards has, is an original kind of OG snowboard brand and they have been super supportive of Hanna who's been on tour since the beginning of last year and we have really enjoyed the opportunity to work with them and Hanna. I think just having those core brands a part of this, it's just really vital to our snowboard culture. I think the small brands kind of carry a lot of the soul of snowboarding. One of the really cool examples is you take Chris Rassman. He rides for Rip Curl. Rip Curl has been supporting Chris for over a decade now. Uh, Chris partnered up with the tour. He became one of the tour riders. He was highly successful in it. So it just naturally made sense for Rip Curl to be a part of the industry alliance on the tour. It's a, it's a really unique, cool relationship. I think the primary objective for us with uh, the industry alliance is to ensure uh, sustainability of the industry and the culture. We need to support each other and, you know, it's like rise all tides. I think one of the coolest parts about the Industry Alliance is that all brands are equal, right? Some brands in the Alliance are a little bigger than others. Some brands are really, really small. You know, it gives the opportunity for, for any brand in the snowboard landscape that considers themselves an endemic brand to be a part of the Natural Selection Tour. That's what's really cool about it to me. 
some of this, you know, basic free riding is what snowboarding is just built on, you know, and having the core back it and, you know, be about it is, is super essential. What's special about this industry alliance is that a lot of the other major events that you would see on television that feature snowboarding, the endemic brands simply could not afford to participate in. And this is what makes it so special that this is literally by snowboarding for snowboarding. As we head to a legend in Hannah Beeman who has been excited about the improving conditions yeah. and wants to see the difference between Jackson hey. Hole yes. and Scary Chair. Yes, I am. When we got out for course inspection day, it was a lot better than I thought it would be. So I was pretty excited to actually ride some powder for the first time in like six weeks. <laughs> The Jackson course, we can at least get on slope a little more and kind of get in. And, you know, we rode it last year. So the people that rode it last year were a little more familiar with it. We had a lot more time to plan out our runs and kind of strategize. And here, it's like you kind of didn't know what you were getting into until you're here. And a lot of us haven't ridden the course. A lot of us are just getting literally thrown into that for the first time and just figuring it out. So... An incredible two decades plus career for Hannah Beeman, who began up at Big Bear and becoming legendary in the park and then making this tr transition into the backcountry where she's really made her mark. And now another notch in her cap. She is the first female rider to drop into a contest on Scary Cherry ever. Just opening it up completely. Big day in snowboarding. Of course, all the riders are mic'd up, but Hana usually gives us a, a treat with her audio. Going straight air and a backside three off of that. Shit. And you can see the snow conditions a little bit tricky in that upper section, but still a really solid start to her first go. Yeah, I like the way Hana muscled that first part of the landing on that backside three, got caught up on the back half, but it just shows you that strength and intention in the riding. Exactly. Oh. And just saying it straight, I can hear that. Told you. <laughs> Talking to herself. <laughs> Little insight into Hana's strategy. And going big off that lower kicker right there. I love her self-commentary, man, it's the best. All of you crabs. All of you crabs. can hear her <laughs> commenting on her own selection of crabs. She's all like, mute crabs. She's like Mary and Salema, like, y'all are cool, but I, I actually know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Let me help you out from the field. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But great way to kick off the women's rounds with Hana and that first go down the course ever. Taking a look at the top, sending it off pretty deep off that first one, and then the backside 360 lands, and I think just gets a little caught up in some of that tracked out, very windblown snow right there. It was a great combo. Definitely. And that's what we see normally, you know, the, the conditions throughout the day, more tracks, it just changes, and the navigation of that is part of the contest, which Hana, it really excels at. A little mute poke there at the end. The first woman ever to compete here on Scary Cherry. And a strong start. You hear her saying not bad with that 78. C's get degrees, right? <laughs> they don't win snowmobiles. <laughs> if there's anybody who's playing a home game here at the Baldface Lodge stop, it is Robin Van Jin. One of my first guide experiences when I came to Baldface, Robin was my guide. She knows literally almost every square foot of this terrain. Yeah, I've, I've ridden the course a couple times before, which is really nice and definitely pretty nice to be able to kind of know the terrain and the snow around here. So, and it kind of feels like being at home. So it's really comfortable for me to be here and on this terrain and with lots of people that I know and love. Mindset and approach for this week, I think I'm just gonna carry kind of exactly what I did last year was just kind of do what feels good and try to have fun. And I know that sounds pretty cliche, but I feel like I always perform the best when I'm 
you know, faced with a really good challenge, but I'm also like having fun and doing really what feels good and not forcing it to do something else. I think more than anything, um, because this feels somewhat like home turf for me, winning at home or even podiuming at home would be so amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, it would just be great to celebrate here with so many amazing people and in the place that I've really grown a lot in my own snowboarding. Bald Face Lodge has given me so much over the years and I feel like it would be this amazing moment for me to be able to celebrate here. Focus merged with fun. Won the uh, adjusted format last year here uh, at Ballface, and you could hear in her voice, like, I want to win this version. And she's coming in hot, of course, with great momentum uh, from that win in Alaska last year, the second at Jackson Hole to start here. I mean, the, her level of dedication and that grit, like, she is just grit. Oh, yeah. And of course, I mean, goes without saying, the 2021 tour champion. You know, she, Robin is the full, the full package, like you said, the fun and focus. She has a very deft way of reading terrain and finding creative lines. As you see her straight airing off of that diving board at the top and just picking her way down until she can get to that good bald face blower down there. There we go, there it is. That backside turn was gorgeous. And of course, as you mentioned, this this trail, these steeps, these are home for Robin. And so you can only guess that she's been thinking about this line. The back three just going down in the landing, but popping right back up to continue on. And a straight air as she comes down into the guts of Scary Cherry into this last jump feature. Oh my God. And just a oh. little bit short, landing on the knuckle. Happy to be down in one piece. No, no doubt a lot of data taken in for the second run. Exactly, and that's such a big part of it because as we sit here, we watch the course change from rider to rider to rider. The tracks increase, especially when you have that very kind of wind-packed snow up there. But look, that's massive. Taking a straight air off of that diving board feature, that is just enormous. Looking for tail grab straight air off of that and just getting that beautiful, as you mentioned, that pristine toe side carve and going down on that 360, unfortunately. Yeah, I didn't get the pop, and so I had to work to get that rotation around, which affected the landing. And for Robin Van Jin, it's a 60, and uh, her face says it all. I'll be back with the intention to do more. Yeah, she wants more, for sure. Robin came into natural selection not having like ever competed, but she has a really, really good mindset for it. Yeah, to the point where she was champion last season. Exactly, the natural. <laughs> a natural who was selected. Elena Height, I mean, riding um, high, victory almost, in Jackson yeah. Hole, so much confidence yeah. felt. Okay. The, the Jackson Hole stop of natural selection was such a treat for me. Um, I really went into that event with no expectations and just wanting to really enjoy the experience. And so to come away with a win was like a cherry on top. Uh, and in the weeks after, you know, just really looking forward to this stop up here in Baldface. Riding in this event is funny because you're head to head against these other riders and especially on the women's side, like I respect and appreciate all of the girls riding so much and honestly feel like I'm riding against some of my snowboard idols. So I really went into this event like just wanting to ride my personal best and uh, yeah, see who came out on top. Elena has an incredible feature called Microdose directed by the one and only 
Justin Hosnick that takes a deeper look into her career. This is an athlete who's been competing since she was around 14, 15 years of age. We know the accolades at X Games uh, and at the Olympics, but what she's done to expand her riding into the backcountry is it's really, really incredible. Exactly, because not only, like you said, has she been doing this for quite some time, she's been raising the bar continually since she was 13 years old. Elena doesn't just compete, she excels. And it was very exciting watching the culmination of her freestyle background, her competitive background, merge with her newfound love of the backcountry in Jackson Hole. As you see here popping a very nice method off of that hit and finding that beautiful powder, really open, nice line right there. She makes really pretty turns too. Yeah, she is an incredibly strong rider. And tail grab, straight air off of that lip and heading into this lower kicker. Ooh. Just landing a little high on the landing, unfortunately, right there. Thank God for soft powder. Yes. Because Elena got chucked. Taking a good amount of speed. Oh, and just going past the landing. You know, you got to use that first run to a certain extent to establish the speed of conditions. You don't know before you drop in. Yeah, Justin Craven said it best, right? You might find yourself accidentally going 60 feet. And Elena no doubt felt that one, but... It's nice to see her standing in one piece. And let's take a second look at Elena's run. The culmination of so many years spent competing. The past few really, really dedicated to the backcountry. And we see her just strength, her like hardcore strength as a snowboarder really getting down the hill and throwing out a really nice method into a beautiful roost right there. She really rides with such finesse in addition to, I know I've said it before, but just that strength. She has a really unique combination that she just can power through while making it look so nice. And then unfortunately going down off that uh, little lift of the landing right there. Interested in her score, 49.33. She knows that that is not going to cut it. Looking back up, trying to find a new line in her mind. Earlier, I talked about how curious I was about Marion Erti just because of her powerful big mountain riding and speed and control. She is happy to be here at Boldface Lodge. A dream come true. Uh, it's a big privilege to be here and to be with all the riders. I'm really stoked and yeah, happy to be able to ride this uh, venue. Uh, first impression is like, okay, we are in the middle of nothing. It's about just snowboarding, friends, uh, happy time, and that's all. <laughs> uh, the snow is good. It's deepened the face, it's deepened the sun exposure and the wind exposure also. So like on the cherry scary, the top of the venue is really wind affected and the bottom of the venue looks so fun. I got to meet Marion for the first time at Jackson. And you know, you, when you see her ride, it's just raw power. But she has this big smile and she's so joyful and you're like, wait, are you the same mad woman that I, that I watch on the mountain? That's a good description because she really can tear through conditions. Like she said in Jackson that she's used to having to navigate, you know, less than ideal conditions and she doesn't have an issue with them and she just screams down the mountain. So we saw her really, really infusing that approach with this freestyle aesthetic and she rode so well at the first stop of the tour. So this is really her element right here. As we are seeing the, the way she's just attacking fearlessly the scary cherry section or she said carry scary cherry scary and doing some route finding opting for a bit of a different line on that lower section and taking that last hit straight air into or second to last hit excuse me 
And clean on that last jump right there for Marianne. That's a great run to start off. She's loving hearing the approval of her peers. I think in this, this replay, this recap, we'll see just how technical it was that, that she had attacked that middle section of the run. I agree. Taking a second look, this is where we really see the nuance to Marion's riding and how she's able to pick apart the features on a face like this. I mean, look at that beautiful turn linking. And we have a straight air, it's getting that front side air off of that diving board and then Mach 10 into that beautiful toe side turn. Yes, B check is, is not in her vocabulary. No, not at all. They don't have that in French, I don't think. Great run to build off of for Marianne. Great start. <laughs> Strong riding, you were booking it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, girl. Oh. So sick. You know, the camera, you're not really able to appreciate that 40 plus degrees of pitch, which is why the, all those riders are like, yo, you would. You made that look like you were riding on something flat. Exactly, and I think it also, you know, we don't get that really how fast they are going. We get a sense of it, but she was going downhill. Interested in her score, 67.33. Again, the Credo system lets you know exactly where she needs to make some improvements to get up into that excellent range. Exactly, and I think, as I said, that was a really strong run, but she has another gear that she's definitely gonna put it into now that she knows the lay of the land of Scary Cherry. I don't think anyone would argue with me to say that the future of progressive women snowboarding lies in the hands of young Zoe Sadowski Sinat from Wanaka, New Zealand. Coming off of a gold medal performance in China in slope style, she is here and ready to rock and get back to natural selection. Yeah, I uh, just came back from the Olympics and had a pretty good time and managed to come first in slope style and second in bigger. And yeah, there was a lot of pressure leading up, so I'm glad it's over and now we can just ride power. I'd say the difference between the vibe here versus the Olympics is like everyone's kind of uh, chill and like-minded and just want to have a good time. And I think it was a little more tense over at the Olympics. There was a, a lot riding on that. Just a little more tense than uh, the, the bro fest going on here at Bald Face. You know what? I remember last year, the, the questions as she was coming into Jackson, it was like, we know what she can do in, in slope style. Will she be able to adapt? And some people questioned whether this was going to be her gig. Well, and then I feel like she uh, she shut up everyone that was questioning it. Yes. <laughs> she just exploded. I mean, even the top of this course, look how many features she's going for. She's that really nice backside three off that popper up at top. Stale fish off of the diving board. I mean, she's finding her own line very deftly right now. Yeah, and an ability to, to, to be powerful and light-footed at the same time. And there's a big backflip, unfortunately wheeling out a little bit on the landing, but a little preview of, of what she's got in her bag of tricks right now and her strategy for this. Oh, that was oh, gorgeous. Really finding the transition, I mean the landing perfectly on that, excuse me. And a big front three, but getting a little caught up in the tracks and that landing right there. Well, that's just the tester <laughs> for young Zoe. Strap in, folks. Yeah, that was a heck of a, a getting familiar with the conditions run. So let's take a second look. You know, after winning in Jackson in 2021, this of course is her first time on the Scary Cherry Face and she handled that very well. Sending it really deep and then just really wheeling out a tiny bit on that landing for that backflip. But I'm sure we'll see that again, potentially in her next run. Love this. 
gets that front side grab, pokes it out with style, hits the transition perfectly. That's big. Yes. Tricks except for her back three up top. Uh huh. And then I was just like, just got excited. Yeah. yeah I don't know. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't that was a plan to do no tricks. That was Zoe just, you know, getting creative. I mean, come on. Yeah, well, look at that. I plan to do nothing, and I'm in first place with an 84. I'm praying for the rest of your souls. <laughs> but she's so nice about it. You know, she does it in a really nice way. <laughs> and so Zoe Sadowski Sinat unintentionally setting the tone, followed by Hannah Beeman, Marion Hurti. I love the variance of styles that we saw from the women in this historical first run, and we look forward to what is to come as we head towards their final. So important to remember, too, as we look back at the recap from the first run, is that these riders aren't only going for that finals positioning here at Baldface, but they're scoring points with their overall finish that will matter for the overall tour champion. Four of these five women will be going to the final stop in Alaska, and so they want to stack those points. Of course, you want to make finals here, but this, there's an overall big picture they're also playing for. Yes, this is the bridge to Alaska on this natural selection tour. But as I was just saying, Mary, like the, just the variance of approach and style um, and power from the women in this first historic ever competition on Scary Cherry. Yes, completely. I mean, we can't emphasize enough that first time ever for female riders to compete on Scary Cherry. This is a momentous occasion and every single one of these women showed up and put on a show for their first runs. I am very excited to see w how they up-level it on their second, where they go from here. Yeah, Zoe sadowski Sanat is, uh, is the one for me. If that was her with no intention, it's gonna be scary. But again, any, any one of these women will be able to, to step up now with new, it will step up with new confidence after this first run. Oh. But that right there, that that was that was a trick of trick of the heat for me. And look at that landing, so perfect. As we make our way into the second runs, we remember that natural selection is about naturally integrating with the environment, and of course, sustainability is key. Therefore, we are proud to have TAE Technologies, a natural fusion energy company, helping us get there. We all need to care about climate change. Anybody who recreates outdoors, anybody who lives in a city, because it affects all of us. As a pro snowboarder, we see the effects of it firsthand, winter to winter. You know, the reality is that in the 25 years I've been up there, I've been watching climate change firsthand. And I'm seeing big shifts in the last five years, really. So we're constantly looking for ways to make less of a footprint. You know, when it comes to the natural selection, you know, it, for us it's the first word, natural. You know, a big part of, of this tour, and I think more than that, the lifestyle that comes with, you know, being in the mountains, and the responsibility that we have in the relationship that we all have with the natural world. So TA is here, and we joined up with the natural selection tour to really be its energy partner. TA is really forging the path to perfect power. Ultimately, our goal is to provide this world with clean fusion energy that is non-radioactive, that is carbon-free for hundreds of thousands of years. Our journey really begins with us making our current energy ecosystem more efficient. And we can find that in everything going on in this tour, from looking at the batteries and the camera and the drones that are filming the competition, 
to looking at the generators at night that are lighting up the sky. We've talked with TAE specifically about creating a battery generator hybrid model for our energy at the lodge, where that surplus energy could be stored in batteries so that we could turn off the generators for eight hours of non-peak time. TAE has, for over two decades, been working on the future of clean and sustainable energy. To have them as a partner of ours, it's incredible because, you know, with our partnerships with CI, our support for POW, this is what we get really excited about. At the Natural Selection Tour, we always say Mother Nature is the queen, right? She calls the shots. We play in her playground. We really want to actively try to protect that environment because what we do requires snowfall. With less snowfall comes less fun for us. It's definitely important to be educated about it. And I like to, you know, make sure that we can spread the message as much as we can. I did. Um, I did a frontside five off that jump, landed switch, cut across the gully on my switch toe edge, did like a little cab one off this pillow, then came down, found my way, backflipped off of a, a step down, uh, a couple little cliff drops, a little tail grab at the end, and then rode out with some speed. We are ready for the second runs. Welcome back to the TAE Natural Selection at Bald Face Lodge. Stop two of the Natural Selection Tour. Conditions staying absolutely pristine as young Dustin Craven from just next door in Revelstoke is ready to attack. You know, he was the first person to go in our first runs. He definitely was feeling everything out. We knew he had so much more to give as we see him dropping in switch to start off. Popping a half cab with some defiance off of that first hit and into a big straight air and finding that fresh powder in that. Then a little back 180, I mean, little with a grain of salt on Scary Cherry. <laughs> and look at these switch turns as he's mocking through this section. Judges going to love that in the Credo system. I mean, that's a big strategy in this run that he's definitely utilizing to his advantage because you want to get from feature to feature and do it well in that way. And then cab five, big off of that first jump in this lower section as he lines up for this next hit. Front side seven and pulling out of it, upping the ante on his first run. Dusty is going to be stoked with this one. And then just nice, Front side 360, ooh, going down a little bit on the landing, but really, really solid run from Craven. Yeah, you could hear the cheers from the rest of the riders up top, showing respect for that 720, but definitely up things up. I mean, he's taking that first go position with authority, and no surprise, that's just how Dustin Craven he rides. Sent that thing that so was, deep. That angle really shows it. That was so big. And here we see that 180 that popped him into riding switch as he navigated the fall line. As you said, not so small yeah. at all on this 
perfect little cab 540. Those are some powder legs. He landed, you know, back seat on that and had no problem popping it right up and riding away. That's the experience in that backcountry and in these great BC conditions that he uh, calls home. Yeah, that frontside 720 at the end. Stoked. Will it be more than the 77 from the first one? Big time, yes. A 91.33 for Dusty Craven. Massive. And again, that's that full overall impression. Not only was he doing technical tricks off of the features, but in between the way he was navigating, he was really hey, Travis, utilizing the whole course. Have you, Travis? I'm good. I think I might retire. We're good here. <laughs> I mean, when you come through with the highest score of the day and take the lead from Travis Rice, you might want to just be like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. In all seriousness, Sage Kotzenberg is someone who yep. responds when something like that goes down. Yes, Sage does not see challenges. He sees occasions to rise to. So you know that he is now depressing the pedal to the floor. 83.66 was the score for yep. Sage. Remember, he won our first stop in Jackson Hole with like nothing more than to double it up. My goodness, Wait. Th that it was a there's a snowball going down the hill right now. He went gap to tap and just exploded that pillow to the point where it is chasing him down the <laughs> mountain. That oh my god, it's still with him as he navigates the middle <laughs> section. That was enormous. Okay, he's gonna let it pass by. Wow. Went out, smashed the pillow, and then caused like a, a mini Abbey. Oh my goodness. Ah. And then Ragdoll's doing nothing. As those snowballs are still chasing him down the mountain. You can see him going for a little bit of that midline playfulness. Just popping a very easy backside 360 right there. I wonder if when he got caught looking back up at the snow debris, if it maybe took away some of his focus. Oh, totally. Because he fell not really doing anything. That was crazy. Dude. Man, it was like, I was like, wow, that stuff's going fast. And then you can see it was one ball and then it split into eight. Dude. I like messed my whole line up. Or not like bad, but. Dude. Three very powerful Ooh. and definitive dudes. You have to be so aware when you're riding in backcountry conditions and you have slough or any snow like oh. that, your attention really does okay. turn to see where it's coming from, how much it is, because you might have to mitigate hey, some sort of um, danger. So it's not surprising <laughs> that what seems to us at home is not a lot of snow falling would cause alarm and totally throw him off. Yeah, how about the fact that he tapped that and the whole pillow just went, Bye. That That is wild looking. And also it was just massive. It gives you the context of the size of the obstacle. Just another way that Mother Nature's whims come into play. This is a very real world scenario. There's no control for that kind of thing. It's called Scary Cherry for a reason, <laughs> folks. It was huge. Oh. Yeah. Well, I don't think there's any more snow on that one. Man, the sloughs are firm too, eh? Yeah, they got really firm. Yeah. Nice, dude. Yeah. What? Ball. I feel like it's a little bit, like bit over. Well, that 47.33 will not factor in. We'll keep the 83.66. Yeah, <laughs> right there, Dusty just said, that was the best switch toe side turn I've ever done in my life <laughs> on his run. <laughs> it looked like it. It was very clean. Torstein Horgmo, he feeds off of good energy. No doubt he is feeling it yeah, Gabe. here in this second run. Torstein, of course, sitting in the lower four right now, wanting to improve to make the semifinals. But you can see the, the snow, the tracks, it's definitely still pretty challenging up there. 
going backside 360 and just getting right into the takeoff for that next diving board. Cannot discount the challenges of just riding through that heavier wind-packed snow up at top. Yeah, his first core of that 70.33 has him in that eight spot, like literally on the bubble of the cut. Entering the second portion of the course, that middle area where the snow turns more friendly. Oh. Big frontside 180. Somewhere Devin Walsh is screaming in approval at that one. Going switch back three. You could hear the effort on his body, Mike, on that one and getting just getting around toward the lower section of this course. That door. And this is a classic example of like, yes, there was a fall, but also the rest of the run. Totally, and that matters. That whole full observation from top to bottom is what he's getting scored on. You can fall and still have a very good score. So let's take a second look at Torstein Horgmo's run. Sends it big off of that pillow right there, tapping it, landing super clean. And there's that big frontside 180 homage to some of the British Columbian Canadians who do it so well. And then this switch backside 360 with a very technical landing on top of a technical trick. I mean, we didn't see the fall on the replay, but it was there. But again, this overall impression will be very interesting to see how the judges reward. Good turns, though. Yeah. Like, you know what it is, too, is it's like when you go into the lifts and there's any tracks, you're like, you're like oh, I'm going to take the tracks with all, like on that little one. It's like, look at that patch in the middle. But both ways is out of the one track, and then there's still like this much lip on either side. <laughs> yeah. Or it's like, you'd be fine. Oh, a great <laughs> score. 84.66. I got an 84 for that? Are you so he me? betters his first run. He's in shock, but we're not. It's, as you said, following the credo, you can have a bobble like that in a run and still have the rest of your run up level the entirety. Young Jared Elston. Locked in. We go from Park City back to Bend. I have a feeling that Elson is about to go loony. Yes. His, uh, his first run, I think, was just him getting comfortable. And it was a comfortable score of an 80. <laughs> yeah. Starting it off with a backside 360, tapping the pillow on his... That was huge. <laughs> Deep on the landing right there. And going cab five off of that diving board... Now back to regular as he approaches this next oh. popper. Ooh, gets a little bit off kilter off that one, but holds on. Shows you how technical it is to go from those, to those gap to pillow taps. They might look easy, but if they're mistimed, bad things can happen. A nice save for Elston. His style of riding is so strong and yet so creative and fluid that he really adapts to nuances and terrain very easily. And right when you said it. He's like, oh, wait, I'm getting praise right now. Let me just go for a little mini ragdoll. Commentator Oops. curse. That was, that was big. Yeah, um, somehow saved that. That could have also gone very bad. Keep it wild. We love it. I'm just Whoa. Gonna go, I'm just going to go switch back rodeo at the end. Whoa. Just <laughs> a split second decision from Elston. Okay. <laughs> Way to put an end cap on that. 23 years old, you know, it's... it's What's the, what's the harm? You know, he just, Elston has been so incredible to watch navigate this terrain because he has such a unique perspective on what he's hitting and how he rides. It's incredible. That was burly. The tracks are wild, eh? Yeah, it's pretty gnarly. Well, he got caught on the last lip. Yeah, me too. I got Indiana Jones. Well, you see that uh, 57.66. So for Elston, he, like Sage, will be holding on to his first score, in this case, an 80. But hearing the conversation, they're starting to talk about the degradation of the course because of 
so much riding that's taking place. Yeah, at the same time, you get more familiar with the speed and with the features and the layout. The degradation really affects what you can hit smoothly and land. It's a double-edged sword. I respect our highly decorated judging panel and their application of Credo. However, on Blake Paul's first run, I am still in shock that it was a 50.33. We saw his reaction. He, too, was in shock. How do you shake that away and do what you came here to do, which was stamp at least a, a ticket to Alaska? Exactly. That's where I think the mental game comes into play so much. And Blake just looking at this run as clean slate, let's just do what I know how to do and bring my sense of fluidity and creativity to Scary Cherry. See, so lining up for this popper. Oh, sitting down just a little bit on that, unfortunately, but it looked really nice before that. Of all the riders in the field, my favorite to watch in between, in between obstacles. I mean, the turns are just gorgeous as he's coming in here, switch. Big switch backside 180, beautiful, technical. Now back to regular as he heads into this next kicker. And look he's going backside five, but just not getting totally all the way around before he touched down. Oh, he got the heel side bucking. You saw, as he lays out the backflip at the end, you saw as he was coming into that, he hit a weird rut, yet still decided to throw it. Well, that's part of the calculus right now, too, because Blake is sitting in that ninth position, and the ninth rider is not going to be going to Alaska. So it's kind of a go-for-broke mentality, I would assume, where you know that you have to get into that top eight if you're not going to get in that top four just to punch your ticket to the Tordrillos. He was doing well to handle uh, the ruts and still look smooth. You saw right there in the entry into that backside 540, right here, hits that rut, gets thrown off, but still tries to throw it. And when you come up short on a backside 540 and go heel side, well, bad things take place. Kudos to him um, for the showmanship at the end, being like, well, I'm still happy to be here. So you, you will appreciate this backflip. That's it for the kid. And Blake said it for you. This will be his last stop this season on natural selection, but it has been a pure joy to watch his riding, and he's just a joy to be around, his spirit and his love for the, for the game. He really is, and our only consolation is that because he was in the top eight at Jackson this year, he will be able to be invited back for next season, and we can't wait to see him there. It'll be a redemption party of one, and we look forward to it. Nice work by Horgmo and Dustin Craven to improve their scores here in the first half of run two. Let's take a look at a down day with Mark McMorris and company brought to us by Burton.
that POV footage shot on the GoPro Hero 10, and you saw that little clip of McMorris in a vest. That was for Natural Selection Duels, some bonus competition, which you can learn more about at naturalselectiontour.com. Big bad Ben Ferguson. You know that he wants to make it into the semifinals. And to that end, he starts things off with a lofty half cab right at the top of the course. And into a huge backside three. I think he held on to that one. I think he did too. A little shifty. And he's heading down. Oh. Whoa! Let me just chuck a mid-face frontside three. Transfer, that was dirty. The judges are making many annotations right now about that Woo. one. Oh, a beautiful little poked out back one. And a really sick switchback five just corking that out right there going off axis. Oh, the kid came to play. A little stale fish to boot at the end. Wow. You can see he is happy with that one. That was a very solid run from the man from Bend, Oregon. A pure flamboyant display of snowboarding. You know, the mix of technical trickery with that just so loose. classic Ben Ferg style never disappoints. I am offended by the display of high-level snowboarding we just witnessed. How about this, Mary? Off the top. Oh, how about a little tap on the pillow on that backside three that we did not see? Oh, my goodness. And look at that. I think that this run is an exhibition of what a natural selection run should be. Ben Ferguson just hit it out of the park on this. Indeed. I mean, the backside 180 into this absolutely perfect cork switch backside five. Who wants some? Oh, my goodness. This is Ben Ferguson doing what Ben Ferguson does on Scary Cherry. I mean, this is this is a moment. For sure. Five on that jump. I got so tossed on the run in on that thing. It's crazy. Yeah. Different than it was. A 93.33, yet again, a highest score of the day, and when he needed to. He had just fallen into fifth place and found himself out of the quarterfinals, Mary. With that, Ferguson has secured his spot moving to the next round, as well as just literally secured his ticket to AK. Let's take a look at what Travis Rice is riding before his second run. I'm Travis Rice. I'm going to say natural selection is probably my favorite discipline in snowboarding because it involves just about all disciplines. The board that I ride, especially for this event, is the Golden Orca. This board I spent many years designing with my friends at Lib Technologies. We took the impossible task of how do you turn the best directional board out there into a twin. That was, that was the task. It took us years to get there. But this is a pack that I've designed over the years with Quick. It's my pack. A couple key features that I like is, you know, it's all about fast access. This little pull tab, you just yank the thing. A couple other great things um, that I'll keep in is, you know, a lighter, a little roll of duct tape, a couple zip, a couple zip ties, um, and, Sometimes a splint when we're going on full missions, like a little, you know, you can get these really small kind of compression splints. I'm super excited for where the tour is headed this year and appreciate you yeah, being interested. And uh, thank you to Backcountry, one of our most um, solid supporters and where you can find some badass merch. Just a reminder that a rider like Travis Rice does not just put his name on things. He literally makes them happen. If you want to ride what Travis is riding, go to backcountry.com uh, to get some of his gear as well as natural selection gear 
you, you want to flex that when you're out in the streets so that people can see you and be like, oh, you're down with NST too. Travis Rice with that switch backside 540 especially had a great score in that first run of an 88 even. What do you think that he attempts to bring in this second run? You know, knowing Travis, it really could be anything, but I think what we can expect is that creativity between features, really utilizing the entirety of the course from top to bottom, in addition to, like you were saying, the technical tricks, I think we're gonna see that switchback five or an up-leveling of it. Beautiful method to start things off that first diving board feature. And as he navigates down to the second one, really poking out that front side 360 as he opens up a new section of the course right now. Coming in hard left. It's exciting watching Travis rip down through the course because he has a uh, tendency to open up new lines, like with that very big cliff drop. Looked like he was going for the tail grab on that. And big, then... Big backside 360. Front side five, massive as he careens to the guts of the course right now. And just, you know, throwing in a switch back one for good measure. We talk about the creativity. We also know that Travis is a showman and he knows the emotional impression the judges will get from him deciding to open up a whole new side of the course with three critical features in a row. Exactly. We, I mean, we saw him do this in Jackson in the past as well. He's always looking for that line less ridden. And, and, you know, partly I'm, it's a strategy for his scoring, but I feel like also he's put so much time and work into these courses. I'm sure he just wants to see what these other features are, give them their due, and get some fun out of those unused aspects of the course. We saw him do that after the event in Jackson where he went right, far right side just to be like, nobody hit these things. And look at that poke on that front three. That was a thing of beauty. Well, that was perfect. All the pieces came together in this run. Right there, didn't get the grab. It looked like he was going for with that tail quite, but you know, kind of it's good to see Travis Rice as a human. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know that he was capable of missing a tail grab, but I, it makes me feel better about my own life. And you know, I have to say that as we mentioned before, that's not a deal breaker by any means. You can have a bobble or a fall in a run, and we're looking at that that O oh in Credo, that overall impression and how it all flows together. And that's one thing that Travis really has on lock is finding that really unique line. Well, this was a goat doing goat things. Yes. <laughs> and the score is going to reflect that. Billy goating, you might say. Hey, well played. <laughs> Sometimes people forget with how cheery Travis is that he is a fierce competitor. A 90.66, he says, take that, younglings. Respect. That was amazing. You know, I think it's been since 2013 that we have gotten to see Scary Cherry in this light, and it was worth the wait. Absolutely. Well, Micklebang tends yeah. to like to uh, increase his flow in, in situations like this. No doubt seeing the way all of these riders in the second runs have continued to up level. And no doubt Mickle would like to take his 170 and join in the party. And you'd see Mickle right here looking for those fresh like Ooh, finding transition on that bump. That was... Very nice, really creative line right there from Mikkel. Precision sniper. And a beautiful backside 180, just floating that down the face of Scary Cherry. And coming into some switch carves. Again, really amplifying that path from feature to feature. Ooh, and somehow putting that switch back side by 40 down. I mean, very rarely do you see Mikkel get off kilter in the air at all, but the, the testament to him that he, you know, still was able to really touch down and ride away on that. That was very impressive. The 
The level in these second runs, May. I mean, high to very high. Holy. I think, you know, basically the beast was unleashed here at Bald Face and all the riders are rising to the occasion and watching them up the ante for each other is so wild and so impressive. Big frontside air right there, touching down, having no issues and going deep. And here we see him almost at Arthur Longo-esque. Yes. Precision tranny finder right there onto that bump. I mean, it's just a thing of, it's just beautiful. Yeah, and then you get the perspective of the size of that backside 180. So sick. I mean, that's classic Mickelbank style right there. And then we have that switchback five where he got a little off in the air, but you know, like a cat, he found his feet, no problem, and rides away clean. Strong run. Yeah, very easy when he missed the grab to have panicked, and he didn't panic. He's like, all right, I'm. Holy shit. Dude, you're <laughs> oh. nice, dude. dude, your run was so sick. Dude. Oh, dude. How's that oh, switchback yeah. five? <laughs> Thought I was gonna <laughs> die, dude. <laughs> I like the commitment. Back one on oh. top. The next level. Yeah, that one was. Oh, that back one was insane. Yeah. How the hell? Yeah. Did they get yeah, yeah, Sick riding, you guys. You got a 73. <laughs> Perhaps the judges wanting to have seen that switchback side five fully executed with the grab. Yeah, that's all that I can think as well. I mean, their job is definitely not easy. They have to pay attention to such nuanced, um, you know, details of each run. But that's, that's why we can talk and criticize them. Yeah, yeah. We don't have that pressure. <laughs> this is very true. You know who likes pressure? Who smiles in the face of it? This guy, the sparky one, Mark McMorris. Don't let all the joy and the smiling and the, the maple syrup fool you. He's coming in with heavy desire here for the win. So coming in switch, this first hit. Whoa. Half cab <laughs> to the bottom right there. That takeoff was so technical because he can't jump. He kind of has to float off it and suck it up. Oh, yeah. This angle really gives you that perspective of just the speed that is being picked up on the landings. Look how fast he's going. Oh my oh. gosh, that high speed butter. That was really rad. Snowboarding is pretty <laughs> cool, especially when it's done at this level. And a contest that can reward that, can reward a high speed butter like that. Yo! Oh no! Switch. Back, cork three to two, face. Yeah. To face slide, somehow bounce out of it. And just throw a backy. He's not stoked, but we're kind of stoked because I've never seen that before. No, and just, I think, further evidence of his uh, superhuman status. I think that kind of trick and uh, landing would <laughs> sideline mere mortals. Look at how aggressively he just goes to town on the top of this course. And starting things off with a big half cab drop right there. So fast in the landing, he's got to slough some speed before he just drops that mute so far into the landing. And this, this was one of my favorite parts of his run, the high speed butter. The 50, so, foot, 50 foot nose butter? Oh my God. And here, kind of getting a bit off of his line, you can see the tracks, I think, caught him up in the run-in for that jump, which just sent him into that kind of, you know, cork that didn't match up the landing. Yeah, somehow or another, again, he lands, landed pretty much like facially, bounced out of that it. That jumps, run-in just changed crazy from run one to run two, seriously. I wish I would've just took it the way Travis did. Like, you know how student, I did well, that 60.33 is not yeah. going to oh, put Mark like, into yeah. the semifinals. Like However, like he does qualify eighth, wild. which allows him to go on to Alaska, unlike the man he's standing next to, Blake Paul. So 
Well, after a pure blitz of high-level snowboarding on Scary Cherry, it is Ben Ferguson, Dustin Craven, Travis Rice, and Mikkel Bang that have sealed their deal into the semifinals here at Baldface Lodge. You know, what's exciting for me, having finished this men's qualifiers, is that with every run we see from Jackson to here at Baldface, we are getting an even richer picture of what is possible here at this entire tour. The level of creativity, the technical prowess, the way that these riders are each interpreting this course is so insane to watch. Travis's intention with this was to highlight the different ways in which riders build relationship with, and then express themselves on a course. And in this second run, we saw that as about as across the board as you could ask for. I totally agree. And I think elements of this are things that we wouldn't often get to see because they would happen on the editing room floor when you're making a snowboard movie. We are now privy to the way that these riders learn about and interpret the backcountry terrain in this way that we've never gotten to see before. And it's really incredibly exciting. And just that reminder that like, we're not done. After this, we're going to do this in the largest way possible in Alaska. Of course, the uh, the pillow tap heard around the world from Sage Kotzenberg, that's that's gonna go into the, uh, the record books of Hall of Fame uh, natural selection moments. It's up there with Micklebang's rock tap. Well, before we get into run two with the women, what is Hannah Beeman riding? My name is Hannah Beeman, and my hometown is Big Bear Lake, California, and I live in Bellingham, Washington now. I chose the Ride Snowboard Psycho Candy for this competition. These bindings are the C10, and they are a composite binding from Ride Snowboards. They have a carbon high back, and they just feel really good underfoot and keep my feet nice and cozy while I'm cruising around. My kit this year is 686 uh, New Women's Shell, Gore-Tex Shell. I also have the 686 Women's Hydrostash bib on. Those are Gore-Tex and also have Hydrostash uh, water system in it. Uh, they're great, uh, they're light, super comfortable to move around and they keep me dry and warm. We have some ski straps. A shovel, we got a probe, hand sanitizer, goggle cover from Avalon 7, headlamp, just in case you find yourself out there after dark, and the microphone. <laughs> that's a that's a go-to. Thanks Thank for tuning you. in and checking out all this gear I'm using for the Natural Selection Tour this year. I hope you guys have a fun and safe winter and go check out some of this stuff. Get some of your own. Hana, the genuine article, Beeman. Go to backcountry.com to get her gear as well as some excellent natural selection gear as well as some backcountry.com gear. It's all there. That beating of the chest signifies that Hana Beeman is ready to go here in run two for the women. That first score of Hana Beeman's a 78 that has her in second place. And this is for a quest to get straight to the final. Two women of these five are going to move on. Yes, this is a consequential second round qualifiers for these riders right now. And so Hana's starting off taking a straight air off of the right side of that first lip. And you know, going through the top part of this course now, it is quite tracked. So navigating and finding that kind of open, fresher snow is part of what is challenging right now. Yeah, the difference between landing in that soft snow is you see the difference immediately as she gets here into the bottom half of the course, but then having to work her way through that, that chowder at the top is tough. Exactly. Right here, some beauty carves from the Bellingham, Washington, Hana Beeman. Her combination of veteran backcountry status and competition experience from the early part of her career has really served her well in the natural selection tour in 2021 and leading up to this. 
Ooh. And just getting lost a little bit in the tracks there, but that was a big straighter. It was huge. So one more feature down here in the gut of Scary Cherry. And opting to avoid those tracks and get a little butter in there on that last hit. You know, I think this is a sign of the conditions at the top of the course that uh, it was challenging picking the way down and Hannah's really looking to hold on to that first run score. Yeah, I mean, th- just the shadow at the top of the course, which this northeast facing aspect only holds sunlight until about noon. And as soon as shade hits that kind of area, it's going to you know, make that snow even heavier, even maybe have a little bit of a crust on it very quickly. So that's very challenging to navigate. Big drop off of that first table, and it just the tracks are make it very hard to land in. Hana's an incredibly strong rider, and so I feel like if she's having a bobble in the landing, again, that is a showing of the conditions that she's navigating. And that takes energy to navigate those conditions at the top. And you see she wasn't left with much even when she got into the good snow at the bottom of the course. And very, very safe to say that Hannah's gonna be sitting on that first score of a 78. The, the bigger question will be, will that be enough to carry her into the final? Oh, was my second run of 54? Is that how that goes? A 54.66 to be precise. Not an improvement. Robin Van Jin, remember, this is her backyard. A longtime guide here at Bald Face Lodge, known amongst the snowboarding community for her snowboarding ability and prowess, but to the rest of the world as a competitor, it's only been through natural selection. She's our defending champion. She wants to win so badly here at home. Yes, you can see her giving herself some stoke right there in her mic saying, you got it. Ooh, and sending it off of that drop, but you can really see this is tough out there right now. Those landings are are torn up. And going for that front 360 and just getting into that track snow and not able to kind of hold on to that landing right there. It's tough out there. It is a struggle. And again, we're watching the best in the world. And it really puts into perspective. I mean, this aspect with great snow, I forget which rider said it earlier. They said, Look, it's scary, Cherry. Even with lots of snow and perfection, it's still scary and difficult. Yes, completely. It's incredibly steep up there. And look at that big backside three. Again, I think it comes into play too, the energy and the strength that it takes to get all the way down. And these riders, Robin has incredible stamina. You said it, they are the best in the world. And it's definitely still a challenge. But really finding that really good snow, Dropping off that feature right there, very clean as she comes into the bottom of the course. And for those at home, you know, riding in and out of light and shadow in in pedestrian conditions can be challenging, but in these conditions, it, it's that much more. Yeah, you can hear it right now. This is a push. By the time these riders get to the bottom, they are fully gassed. They are leaving it all out on the course. So I think an important point to make about Robin's run is, yes, Robin knows this this terrain so well, so she could play it safe and go for kind of these spots and, you know, find her way down and cheat the course a little bit more. But she is taking risks. She's not doing that. She is sending it and going big. And that is really, really impressive. And the fact that the snow has these tracked out landings and you're getting that shade across, that makes it more difficult, but she is going for it. Yeah, you have to respect that. I mean, that is Robin. She's like, I'm going to keep it critical. I don't care what the conditions are. The score, a 52 for Robin. So she will be sitting on her first score of a 60. And this is where things get critical in that bubble of riders that will move forward to Alaska. Yes, They're, the rider that is dropping next is Elena Height, who is currently in fifth place. And if she 
bests her score from run number one, then she will knock Robin into that fifth elimination spot. So Robin is currently on the bubble. That's crazy because to picture Alaska without Robin in it, that that's, doesn't really compute. But Elena, for, for Elena, it computes. Ready. Yep. And we'll see if she's Ready. able to pull it Ready. off. Again, four women moving on to Alaska, but two going to the final today. So multiple implications here in this second run as Elena Hyde is set to go. I like the spring in her step, the little bounce, that confidence bounce as she comes in. And of course, it is without a doubt that we can say that Elena not only wants to be going to Alaska, but I'm sure wants to make it into this finals round here at Baldface. So grabbing tail off of that first popper as she navigates, finding some fresh snow and grabbing a uh, tail again on that second right side of that takeoff. And making some beautiful turns in the process. Woo! Grabbing front side and managing to hold on. This is a great start to the run from Elena. She's really doing a great job of finding some fresh snow. And front side three puts it down. This is a very, very strong run. Method off of the rider's left side. I think it's safe to say Elena is going to be bettering her score. I would have to agree with you. And backside three, riding away easy. Woo! Elena is stoked. She's definitely going to be challenging those top two positions with that. Woo! That was a good run. Yeah. You know, once a smart competitor, always a smart competitor. And Elena's been doing it for a long time. This was impressive. I really like the line that she chose to think, as long as I can find some fresh snow and have that good energy of making great turns, anything's possible. Yes, I think that the line that Elena chose was fantastic. She found fresh landings and she made her route so smooth. And then look at that front side air, that was deep. I mean, she rode so well on this. She really built upon that first run. And look at that beautiful toe side carve right there. And here we have clean front side 360, followed up by a classic Elena Height method. And going backside three and touching down on that landing effortlessly. This was such a strong run. This is going to challenge one of those top two positions for sure. And you are right. An 80.66 for Elena, who finds herself, at least for the moment, moving on into the final. Oh, we love the drama, don't we, at Natural Selection. What a fight for these five women, again, in this historical women's event at Scary Cherry. And Marion Herity from France would like to have a say. Marion definitely wants a piece of that finals action. And, you know, you were talking about it earlier, Salema. This is the kind of course that really speaks to her. And look at that, starting things off with a backside 360. Now she'll take that and apply her free ride skills to that, getting in a frontside air off of that popper as she careens down that left side. Nice front side grab and holding on. You see that strength in the way that she was able to navigate the top half of the course. I thought she was going to get thrown. And that's where so much of the core of her riding strength comes from. But then you add in something like that, that method, that 360 we saw, and Marion is a force. It's truly impressive, that backside 360 at the top for Marion. I know how much she wanted to show the snowboarding world that yes, I'm a big mountain rider, but I can also throw tricks as well in critical conditions. I mean, that's a dangerous place to come from, to have that strength as a big mountain rider, to have that confidence, and then add on the freestyle element on top of that. I think it's safe to say that she is going to be booking her ticket to Alaska, and that is her element right there. It really is. And remember last year, she was unable to make it to Alaska because of the COVID protocols that didn't allow her into the country. 
Yeah, this will be a very deserved rebate for the French rider. And we can see here just cutting through that track. I mean, that is a challenge in itself. Getting a frontside air off of that hit and finding that fresh line, that root finding element before throwing that method. I mean, this was a great run for Marion. And again, not going slow. Mm. <laughs> yeah, girl. That was sick. Not up yet. Not up yet. <laughs> well, she's sitting in joy at the accomplishment. Good job. Now, <laughs> what fruits does it yield? A 70. Nine for Herity, it is, which puts her in third place. Not enough for the final, but we can confirm that Marion Herity is going to Alaska. Well, Zoe Sadowski Sinat is already in the final. What she does in this run is up to her, but remember, in that first run, she said, I had no intention of doing any tricks, and she ended up with the highest score of the round, an 84. So now the strategy is, does she conserve any energy for that finals, or is she just going to use this as an opportunity to get more beta and find a line down the course that she wants to do for finals? Well, judging from that backside 360 to start, I, it would appear that she's going for it. <laughs> I would agree. I feel like that's more her style. <laughs> Straight air off of that drop right there. Get a good sense of how steep Scary Cherry is from that angle as she heads off of this diving board. With a tail grab. And cutting through the snow, but getting caught up in the track a little bit right there. Ooh. Those heelside catchers where suddenly you're head first down the pitch do not feel good. No, no. So making her way, finding that fresh snow. As she heads into the backflip oh. and pulling that one out, she is so good at holding on to landings and just riding out so strong. Went down on that trick on the first run and then came back and said, I'll just do it bigger <laughs> and ride away clean. Classic. And going backside 360, ooh, but landing a little bit high, a little bit on the knuckle but shaking oh it off. Oh my God. Oh, to have 20 year old legs and not really feel most of your slams. I make jokes, but Zoe Sadowski Sinat is kind of one of the best snowboarders I've ever seen. Oh yeah, she is nothing short of explosive. I mean, every time that she drops in, I think that she impresses in this really incredible way. And right here we see her bobbling at the top, but you know, this is basically a run for her to gather data for her finals run. And she sure did a good job of gathering because she was like, I'm just gonna chuck this wildcat deeper than I did the first time. Yeah, and look at this. This is one of the, the things that impresses me so much about Zoe. You can see her wheelie a bit in the landing and hold on. She is just physically so strong. It blows my mind. She's an athlete. Yes. Like she, she's a snowboarder, but she also is in, her base is as an athlete. And those two together absolutely play. Good job. Good job. Well, that side is so tough now. Yeah. And let's not forget this young lady that's what I think comes in with a gold medal around her neck from just a couple of weeks ago, competing in slope style in China at the Olympics. Exactly. Not only does she switch modes from, you know, slope style and big air Zoe into natural selection Zoe, but she's been on a tear and she's riding so well, energy high, fresh as a daisy, no problem. Fresh as a daisy. I'm going to borrow that one. <laughs> well, there we have it. Zoe Sadowski, Sinat, and Elena Height move on in the final, but also of note, Marion Herte and 
Hannah Beeman will be joining them in Alaska. During women's qualifiers, these five riders made history as the very first female snowboarders to compete on Scary Cherry, and they impressed. Hannah Beeman backside 360 to make her way to the final stop of the tour in the Tordrilla Mountains. Marian Erdi showcased why she, she is such a threat on this tour, and all around, these women excelled today. Elena Height will be going into finals against Zoe sadowski Sinnott. This is going to be an exciting matchup. It really is. And just like as we saw in run two with the men, um, the, the women said, yes, we have more in the tank and we will show you and arguably in more challenging conditions than the men were facing. Yes, totally agreed. That's the thing about this course is that it evolves as the contest goes on and these women navigated it very well. They sure did. Well, this event, like a surf event, finds itself with a waiting period to pick out the best day. So during the down days, that means the riders have to figure out how to have some fun. At Baldface Lodge, you have no boards. And what do no boards mean? That means surfing. So why not have an impromptu surf contest to see who can navigate down the mountain the most stylishly on some no-boards. Finish line, people can move in. Technical race of route finding, on siding, strategy. She's got a family of squirrels living underneath her nose. And if I get hungry, I want to see freedom. Excellence, domination. I'm going to start up higher than everybody. Back to going to come through and push back. Copy that. You got a great venue. Any is 100% made. It's gonna be rowdy. Dropping in three, two, one. Everybody made it down. I'm at a loss for words. I don't think I've ever seen anything that crazy before. <laughs> Next competitor, Robin Van Jen. There she goes. Here we go. I did a little pillow line to a little air and then hit a cliff and then the launch rock at the bottom. Yeah, Robin! Psyched to have a landed run in the bag. Woo! Hey, Robin. How was the first run? Yeah, hey. good. Made it down the bottom, some airs, and now I can build on my run. I'm ready to go. All right, Robin Van Jen, second run, dropping. In three, two, one, Robin is dropping. Drop. Yeah, Robin.
Welcome back to the TAE Natural Selection at Baldface Lodge. Salema Masekela joined by Mary Walsh as we head into the semifinals. And we're going to check in with the third member of our team, get the lay of the land from the ground up, if you will, the one and only T-Bird, Tom Monterosso. Thanks, guys. We're here at the base of Scary Cherry in Baldface, one of the greatest contest venues ever created. We just finished men's quarterfinals and women's semifinals, and we are about to head into men's semifinals and women's finals. You're going to see Dustin Craven versus Travis Rice, Ben Ferguson versus Mikkel Bang, and on the women's side for finals, you're going to see Zoe sadowski Sinat against Elena Height. A champion will be crowned here in the next few hours. I can't wait. Let's go! I love the fact that Tom is fired up because if you know Tom Monterosso, he's not always fired up. He's kind of, you know, he saves the fired up for when you need it. Yes, and I mean, with good reason, look at these matchups. What do you see when you look at Travis Rice first off and Dustin Craven? I see that if Dustin beats Travis, he is going to lord that over him for the rest of their lives. <laughs> he already did so when he took over first place in run one. Uh, in the quarterfinals. And then you got a, a home team, if you will. Two Burton Riders, Mikkel Bang and Ben Ferguson, going up against each other again. They did so in Alaska as well. And we are back in our head-to-head -head best of two runs. No tiebreaker here at Baldface Lodge. Travis Rice will be going first because he's older. No, I'm kidding. Dustin Craven's the, the higher seed, so he... Go second. And this is one of those fantasy league level matchups. Travis Rice versus Dustin Craven. Something you never thought you would see that is very, very exciting. Indeed. You see the focus on Travis. And of note, we see cloud cover starting to move in. So keep that in mind as these riders are navig navigating the course here in semifinal heat number one. So Travis Rice on course and getting pulled down by a little bit of a snow snake there up in that kind of more packed, little bit of tracked zone. But finding his way and going backside three deep. And then looks like he's gonna be heading over to that left side of the course that he pioneered during run number two of qualifiers and into that diving board feature. Front side grab and Really soft touch in that landing right there. I love the way Travis, you know, had that little setup for that backside 360 up at the top. And as soon as he landed, boom, was in the air. Nice backside 540 signature. Sending that very deep there. And a half cab into some very nice fresh snow. Into a back three but just not quite finding the landing on that. You could hear the huck right there. You know, even Travis Rice is is uh, is worked after this run. Gassed, and he definitely had to muscle it. There wasn't much pop there off of that bottom. Uh, yeah, like, lower. I'm just gonna go slow down to it and try and spin off it, I think. Well, the advantage, again, for Dustin Craven, is he got to see what exactly the snow was doing from Travis. Let's see if he can make that work to his advantage or not. Looks like he's trying a bit of a new drop on the left side and going big backside three off that untouched diving board, sending it down that first top of Scary Cherry. That was a really nice start to his run. Made it look way too easy. And now heading into this left side little cliff diving board that Travis did and said, yeah, I'll do a front side there too. Ooh, poking it out and holding on right there. A little bit of uh, tit for tat, perhaps. I see what you do. I'll try and uh, one-up it if I can. Heading into this, going cab five, and beautiful landing right there from Mr. Craven. He's calling Travis out with this run. He is, and I, I think... Oh, oh. That did not feel good. I think that might have been my fault. I think I might have cursed him with that one. Looks like a cartoon landing as he's in the bottom getting out of that ditched backside 540. I 
I feel like we could hear that from from here. Given the uh, the signal that he's okay, looked like he might have knocked the wind out of himself a little bit. That's a really scary feeling, I feel like, as an adult, because it happens so infrequently. So when that does occur, it really is uncomfortable. So taking a look back, here's Travis's run and that very pristine backside 360, poking it out over that diving board and then launching into that backside five and just riding away really nice from that one. And then got a little caught up in the air off that one. You could see him kind of trying to find his space, but solid run. And then of course, Dustin answers back. You had that big backside 360 to start things off and then said, ah, I'll, I'll test out your little cliff diving board here. Ups the ante with a cab five and then goes into this last jump pretty big, but gets a little bit off axis in the air and kind of opens up on that landing. This one is pretty close to call. I think, you know, the fall is going to take some points away from Dustin, but he had that, uh, you know, cab five ups the ante on Travis's back five. Yeah, it's gonna be close for sure. I like this uh, waiting till both riders are done to get the score. This is fun. Yeah, first, first second. No, you got it. 66. To and there we have it. By six points in change, Craven with the 66.66 to T Rice's 60. It'll be interesting to see how that second run plays out as we get into heat two. Micklebang and Ben Ferguson first up is going to be Mikkel like Nickel Bang, the big Norwegian. And Mary, at this point, we gotta start to think about endurance in this event. It becomes a little bit of, you know, a, a big enduro event. Completely, you're exactly right. I mean, right now, watching Mikkel, this is the third time that he has scaled this 2,200 vertical foot face from top to bottom, navigating different snow conditions and riding different lines, plus the adrenaline of doing that. Your body is, is so excited, that's a lot. As he was the first rider, I believe, to hit that little double step down. Now, looking at finding that fresh line, big backside five, that was gorgeous and massive. Nickel Bay is a f he's a freak. <laughs> that was insane. <laughs> like, where did you find that? Were you, just, were you just hiding that in your pocket? Oh my goodness. Back to back. Wow. You know, had a bit of a shaky start on this run, but really sent it at that second half. And again, it's just that reminder, in this credo format, a fall does not make you. Wow. Yeah, once, Holy shit. once you see them double over to take that little extra breath to take the bindings off, you can appreciate just how exhausted. Ben Ferg in visual mode. Front side air, poking it out off of that first hit, sticking down to that center of the course. Backside 360. Ooh, getting a little cut up, but holding on there. This becomes that part of the day where it's about surviving the landings. Oh, beautiful front side five. Oh, just not landing it though. Oh, that was that was full Tommy Hawk right there. And this is where that body mic you can hear, you know, he's out of breath, he's breathing heavily. Reinforcing that strength that it takes and that endurance to, to get down this face again and do it with such style like Ferg has. Yeah, that ability to recover. Throw a little late backside 180 there, unable to make the landing, but it still looked pretty. But I'm guessing after Mikkel's run, that for Ferguson, he's going to be thinking about what to do in run two, because run one definitely goes to Mikkel. Definitely, I agree. Ferg's gonna really wanna pull from his reserves heading into that second run because you know, that's gonna be his fourth time riding Those top to bottom scary Terry. Good 
going a little too deep. On Looking back at these two semifinals runs, so Mikkel took the path less traveled and started to open up some more, like that kind of double drop down right there. And there is that beautiful and massive 540. I mean, that was insane. And of course, Ben dropping right after, going toward the rider's right. It's a little bit rougher in that area right now from all the tracks. Started well with that backside three, but just wasn't able to hold onto the landing. And he just got caught up again there. So like you said, he's definitely gonna look to that second run and this one is gonna most likely be in Mikkel's favor. Yeah, that was a real ragdoll. You saw that coming out of that second roll, he was just grabbing and tucking his Did head and nice? holding on for dear life. Yeah, I, the snow up there was pretty crazy. Dude, the one, the snow that I rolled down there too was, it was kind of insane. Like, I fell out. There you see it, an oh, 80 for Bang, 53 for Ferguson. So it'll go to that second run for Ben and that degradation of the course. They're both saying, whoa, you lose the sun and suddenly it's a different scary cherry. It's a scarier cherry. <laughs> yes, that's a good way to put it. It is real simple. Since there is no tiebreaker, Travis Rice not only needs to win this second run, but he needs to have a higher score than Dustin Craven's first run in order to move on to the final. So we've seen Travis utilize the terrain and opening up new lines as a way to not only find fresh snow, but increase the variety and amplify the score of his runs. And it looks like he's gonna be doing that again right now. Oh, shooting the pier. Travis with some gorgeous turns through there. And going off the tip of that. That was amazing. Big backside 180. And into a half cap. The manner in which Travis can always have that one piece of creative, you haven't seen this yet from me, in his pocket. It's one of the special things watching him in competition here. I agree. I think it's partially that he's always thinking so many steps ahead. Oh my <laughs> gosh. This guy. That was right there, exactly what you were talking about. This guy. Who's 39 here? This rad dad has a big corked backside 720. That was enormous. It, it was. You know he wanted a perfect landing out of that because he, he knows what's coming after him. But the fact that that's what he just was like, hey, <laughs> sorry, I just didn't realize I had this. It was in my vest. That is why Travis Rice is Travis Rice. Goat things, my friends. Goat tings. Now what's going through Dustin Craven's mind? <laughs> it's like, oh, that's right. That's, that's a Jedi. I'm, I'm going up against, like, the High Council Jedi leader. <laughs> but, you know, Dustin, that energy before when he took over first place from Travis, where he was like, I'm kind of good here, also, like, you could see the swagger in it. So oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't think he's afraid of this moment. No, Dustin has more than a few tricks up his jacket sleeve, 100%. He's crafty. Now you get such a great perspective from that drone cam. What it looks like to drop in. Floating a cab five right there. And going deep off that one. Look at that speed. Yeah, working hard to control it here as he comes in to this little diving cliff. Greased lightning on that landing. And you think here that he's going to be looking to turn up the volume on this next hit for sure. And big front seven rides away from that. That's a that's a direct affront to Travis right there. And a massive no grab 180 into an open landing. That was clean. Okay, this just got good. Dude, oh. run of the day, kidding me? 
<laughs> dude. That, that was beast mode, dude. Thank you, Eddie. So well earned. That backside 180 at the end. I mean, the whole run. Both these guys. Oh, judges. Okay, so we're really gonna have to look at this because I do not know what the judges are gonna prefer on this with the credo scoring. So Travis put down a very strong run. I mean, in no small part, that was a very bold back seven. Super bold. Again, if I, I think if he didn't have to revert around at the end, it would make it a much stronger case, but it was still incredible. But the way Dustin attacked off the top here was no joke. Exactly. I mean, Dustin Craven is a fine-tuned, scrappy rider. And even though Travis put down a really amazing run, he still kind of left the door open a little bit because Craven was ferocious. And at the same time, you know, Craven could have done a lot better on that frontside seven, a bit missed the grab, but that backside 180 at the end is... Oh my God, shouts to MFM right there. Yay. Oh my gosh. Meeks freaking hammer this thing out for top spot. For most exhausted What's guy it gonna be? Oh, let's see. That Dustin was, Craven with a 92.33 just beat Travis Rice at Scary Cherry and he <laughs> is going to the final. I'm sitting here having flashbacks from the Ots and the Grenadiers and watching Craven and Rice go head to head in 2022. I mean, that was, it's, that was a moment in natural selection mythology now. We love it. Micklebang in first place in this second semifinal with that score of an 80. He knows that he can't just rely on that up against Ben Ferguson. So he will look to put a little bit more sauce on it. Starting things off, going off of that first feature and looking for that, those fresh lines right here as he heads back to that really interesting double line. Clean, very clean for Micklebang. I mean, the steepness of this pitch as you see these riders trying to control their speed and, and regain navigation. Oh! Going for that lofty backside five again and just getting a little caught up at the end of the landing. Taps his head to give a signal to everyone that he is okay. And with that, some daylight for Ben Ferguson. Yes, definitely. It's really interesting to watch Mikkel and the other riders that have so much experience riding big mountain lines with the routes that they choose, especially during this later part of the competition when, you know, options have been, uh, have been taken, routes have been created. A lovely, lovely frontside 360 to end things there. Oh. Wow. Get the snow out of the jacket. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, no. That uh, makes you appreciate what, what these riders are dealing with here. All right, Ben Ferguson. What's up? I'm good to go. You heard him just say it. I'm good to go. He knows what he has to do. Try to beat this score of an 80. Sunlight dancing in and out as these clouds move in here. He's going to need a great run. A little tranny finder up at the top right there. Picking his way down to this next spot. Whoa, backside seven. Oh, going oh, down. Oh, oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Looks oh to God. be okay. That was the heaviest ragdoll. And if you could not tell before just how critical 
This pitch is on Scary Cherry. We just bought, watch Ben Ferguson just literally ragdoll like someone had thrown a toy onto the course. I mean, so much respect and admiration for him, first for sending a back seven like that, and then right now for the grace with which he is navigating the bottom part of that course after that situation. I wonder how many flips his body did. We're, we're about to find out. Oh. So looking back at Mickle's run, this feature is one of my favorites that he, he kind of found and just navigates so clear. And that's where I think you really see that wonderful big mountain experience of his, unfortunately going down right here, just getting a little counterbalanced, I think on the landing. Mm. But then the beautiful front three, just poking that at the end is really, really nice. Well, we knew that Ben was not going to hold back. And right off the bat, he said, I'm going to throw a backside 720 and then this. Oh, man. You know, the spin was really nice. Just very gnarly. I mean, again, glad he's OK. And so much respect to Ben for pulling out and getting down the rest of the course. Those were four violent full body flips. <laughs> Go, that was man. the best ragdoll I've ever had in my life. <laughs> you gotta oh, love that he can that smile and be like, that was the best ragdoll oh, yeah. I've ever had. Yes. Well, there's an Jeez. incredible body work and massage yeah, staff good. here at Bald Face Lodge. Ben Ferguson will be first in line. How's that for a highlight reel, huh? For recovery. Oh. We're just waiting on scores. Uh, because that's part of the rules, but yeah, it's Mickle Bang who is moving on, but absolute salute to Ben Ferguson for saying, I'm not holding back. Gray skies and tough snow. <laughs> and you know, Mickle, he appreciates winning that way, knowing that like, my man, you came and you brought the entirety for me. These riders do leave it all out on the course. Our finals are set. Mikkel Bang and Dustin Craven, Zoe Sadowski, Sanat, and Elena Height when we come back. Natural Selection Valhalla. Mark Solar is first on course, dropping in three, two, one. Mark is on course, on course. Contest is on. I can't wait to see what everyone else is gonna do, and uh, and now we just uh, we snowboard. The hard part is done. Now we just snowboard. We knew that the TAE Natural Selection at Bald Face Lodge event would be high level, but it has over delivered as we head into this final with Dustin Craven now facing Mickle Bang, and you look at the road that they took to get here, which one are you picking, Mary? This is honestly too close to call. I know that sounds trite, but you have Mickle Bang, strong and smooth. Dustin Craven, also strong, but scrappy. Two ends of the spectrum, both so much style. And then we have Elena Height, the veteran, so accomplished against 
Zoe Sadowski Sinat coming straight here with her Olympic gold medal around her neck saying, give me some more. Two riders who have built their competitive acumen in traditional contest settings, slope style and the half pipe. They're both Olympians and they have found their place in the back country. The fellow competitors not going back to the lodge. They're watching right here at the venue in the riders tent for this. This is a historical matchup that it's these two going head to head in the first women's event at Scary Cherry. This is snowboarding history. Yes, who will be crowned the first ever women's champion of natural selection at Baldface? Oh, I'm good. Elena Hyde, you just heard her let the starter know, I am good. Let's do this. Again, carrying that momentum of her win at Jackson Hole into the opportunity to possibly double up. And her run, her second run in qualifiers was so smooth. She made it look easy as she navigated the course. She has such a, an incredible finesse to her big mountain riding. And we see her picking her way down this first top of the course, sending a tail grab off that first popper. Cliff popper, I guess, more accurate, because it sends you. <laughs> it sure does. This is hard. Did you hear that? She said this is hard. Straight from the source, mid-run. Front side air right there. Also very sizable. You know, it definitely is hard, but she doesn't make it look that way. This is a very smooth start to her first run. And just going a little off kilter in the air right there. Usually she had done a front side 360 there. It looked like she was going for a front side 540. Getting a method in. She's gonna have an opportunity for one more hit here down at the bottom of Scary Cherry, if she wants it. And looks like she was going for a three there, back three, but you know, that could be a bit of that, you know, exhaustion that's sitting in. I mean, this, this is the end of the day right now on a very consequential, demanding face. Yeah. We talked about that earlier, that this is also quietly an endurance event. And making it to the final also becomes a little bit of be careful what you wish for. There's layers to the strategy of this. Not only the tricks, the lines, but the energy expansion. As Zoe Sadowski Sinna. 20 years of age, again, fresh off the plane from China. Can she continue her winning ways here at Baldface Lodge? Choosing to change things up with a straight air off that first hit and heading far riders right to find some fresh snow. Tail grab off the, that drop and having to throw the brakes on a little bit. It's steep up there. We said it before, but worth repeating. Well, that Tommy Hawk that we saw from Ben Ferguson helped us appreciate just how steep as Zoe Sadowski Sanat absolutely sends it. You know, she she goes big. That's what Zoe Sadowski Sanat does. <laughs> the definition for this Kiwi rider. And stomping that backflip, making that look pretty easy, even though it's definitely not big tail grab. Going deep as she rounds things off at the bottom of the course. A little bit of a shifty and she's down. Good run. Especially that bottom half, I mean, the power that this young woman has. Yeah, she, she, is, she is rocket fuel. She is pure, pure rocket fuel. Looking again at our two finalists here at the TAE Natural Selection. Elena with a tail grab off that drop. And this is where it comes down to the finesse of both of these riders. 
navigating this course after having taken so many runs today. Elena going for that front seven right there and just getting, again, a little off access. And then, of course, Zoe dropping behind, coming in with the highest score so far into these final runs and just really showcasing her strength. I mean, look at her getting those turns in through those tracks. You see the action of her snowboard letting you know exactly how hard it is to make those turns. And then this bottom half here, the backflip, perfectly done. No issues there. Big straight air with the tail grab. How'd you guys? Somehow being no. able to find that transition. A couple times. Nice run. Thank you. Nice back. Cheers. Elena's saying, hey, that was great. Also, I'm going to be bringing it for you in a second. We need to get into the sleds. What? And it's a 60 for Elena Height and an 88.66 for Zoe sadowski Sinat. The importance now of that number that normally doesn't take place here at Natural Selection, Elena Height has to meet or beat the highest score of the day from Zoe sadowski Sinat. And back up to the top we go. Micklebang and Dustin Craven. First up will be Micklebang. How much does he have left? And I want to know, too, where does he go from here? Both of these guys have been exploring new areas of the course. Are we going to see Mickle go toward that rider's left zone again? Or is he going to kind of open up some new features as well? No, he likes to go big or biggest as the event progresses in the final. So he's not looking for anything easy. Very good point. Okay, taking a left line right now. Again, looks like he might be navigating into a little bit of familiar territory, potentially, or not. Finding a new popper to tranny finder right there. It looked like a, like a small bush or something that he transferred into that left side instead of the step down from before. And a massive front side 720. Oh my goodness. As always, Micklebang delivers in a backside three. Oh, getting a little caught up in the landing there. But wow. Front side 720 grabbing nose. That was filthy. Okay, what's he got on this last one? Sending a little bit of a method there, but you know, I think right there, he's probably just gassed at the end. He's also going to, I mean, I'm not a judge, but that front seven was, <laughs> wow. I back you up on that. I feel the exact same way about that. But of course, this is the position that you don't want to put Dustin Craven in. I mean, you have no choice. You have to send it. But Craven going second, we have seen, he takes advantage of that every single time. He does. Coming in casually to start this off with a shifty. Massive what? straight air. That was enormous. I don't have a tape measure, but that was well over 70 feet. Oh my gosh. It's the finals, Mary. What do we expect? I, you know, I just had to pick my jaw up off the table for that one. Nice little shifty driven front side 180. And now, of course, oh no, getting caught up in those switch powder turns. Again, 
Oh, right on the... I couldn't even see that with this kind of... Uh, flat light. Yeah, the flat light. Oh you, oh, you know he's just broken. Like, that was right before the takeoff. Yeah. Whoa! Well, if you're wondering whether or not these riders are a bit gassed, I'm pretty sure that the body language of Dustin Craven says it all. Hands on the knees before he even stops. And let's go back to the top and take a second look at Mickle and Dustin's first run in finals. Mickle always finding the road less traveled as he found that landing from that little just bump right there. And then an absolutely massive 720 and into the backside 360, but getting a little caught in the landing, squeaking out a method. But again, as you said, this is effort. This is a day of intense effort for these guys. And I loved how casually Dustin Craven rolled into this knowing that he was going to Mars. Oh, what are you talking about? That was insane. <laughs> you know, throwing it back to the beginning of the day, he was the one that said when you, you know, just go 60 feet, but I mean, that was far bigger than that. And look at how big that front side 180 was with so much style falling as he's heading into this run in, but gonna be very interesting call here. Dude, you did the pillow there, huh? No. No? It's all eight so far. Oh, sick. Man, it's so hard to board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. The score for Mickle Bang, a 75 it? to I Dustin Craven's 60. Got too excited and the critical nature nice. of that 720 making a huge yeah. difference. But I would have to say, those falls for Mickle leave room for Dustin as he's only chasing a 75. It could be a lot bigger gap. That is an excellent point. I mean, that does leave the door open. And as Craven said, one more. It's anyone's game. And one more for real for Elena Height. This is the final runs for the women here on Scary Cherry at Bald Face Lodge. Elena Height up against it, chasing an 88.66 of Zoe Sadowski Sinat. Elena has risen to the occasion in these competitive situations time and time again in her competitive career. Will she do that today at Bald Face? She has the tricks. If she makes that front side 720, we're in a different conversation. So let's not forget what this young woman is capable of. Yes. So we sit with bated breath as Elena starts her descent down Scary Cherry. Making her way through this critical section. And again, you see how fast the snow follows her down the mountain. That gives you just more impression of how steep this pitch is. Yes, and that depth with which she sent that first straight air with that tail grab. A little shifty off the rider's right side of that jump and finding some fresh snow right there. And now she's in her happy place and hopefully a few turns can throw her in the right direction to make one of these tricks that she wanted to. I believe this is where she was trying the 720. Not finding the landing on that, unfortunately. But getting that method in, that excellent height style into that hit. And she's got one more before the very bottom of the course. Going backside 360. Oh, and just sitting down right at the very end there. You can hear those gasps. She is exhausted. But what a performance the entire day, the manner in which Elena stepped up. And I'm just gonna go out and say it. This right here is a victory lap 
for Zoe Sadowski Sinna. I don't think she's going to treat it like that and do nothing because that's not the type of competitor she is, but what we're witnessing right now is a champion's run here at Ball Face Lodge. You definitely hit the nail on the head. That's just not who Zoe Sadowski Sinna is. She wouldn't be here in this position if she rested on her laurels. Straight air right off the top, heading to that rider's right zone. Kind of navigating and picking her way down this bit of tracked out snow. And just getting caught up a little bit there. Okay, frontside 360, getting that one around. I'm not sure how, but that was impressive. And I think what's unique about Zoe is that compared to some of the other competitors, she has spent less time in the backcountry, but yet she has very innate root finding skills. You can see her over here finding the, that fresh snow and then really just stomping that backflip, like really no problem. She did that like somehow it was the first one of the day and then sends an awesome stale fish as she's powering through here. Be that was a beautiful stale fish. And a little bit of a bobble in between that last feature, but that was a run that she can feel good about. Absolutely, as perhaps it's just starting to sink in what she's done. Now let's take a look back at both of our finalists for their final run here at Bald Face. Elena Heights sending it off of that diving board and really just finding some flow. Pristine method. Elena has a beautiful method. Kicking it out there. And then of course, Zoe, as you said, Salama, most likely we can feel pretty good that this is her champion lap, but does she hold back? No, she's Zoe, she's not gonna do that. Yeah, how she made that 360, um, it's, it's just a testament to, to her control and her comfortabil comfortability uh, in all types of moments, like never panics. No. And the score is a 73.66 for Elena and a 90 for Zoe Sadowski Sinat. So no doubt that bottom half of her second oh God, run, the big it. combo the judges were feeling. And as we said before, not just a victory lap, but the best <laughs> run of the day for the 20 year old from Wanaka, New Zealand, who again came here with a gold medal on her neck from the Olympics and keeps the ball rolling here at natural selection in this historical first ever women's event at Scary Cherry. Now let's go to the third member of our team. We're gonna check in at the bottom. T-Bird is here with our women's champion. All right, we are here with the women's winner of the natural selection at Bald Face Lodge, Zoe sadowski Sinnet. Zoe, you've kind of had a hell of a month. Yeah, it's been pretty hectic. Came here straight after the Olympics and just so happy to be here, so yeah. That's unbelievable. What was going through your head during finals with the light change, the snow change, just a little bit? Yeah, it uh, it got a bit tracked out between between like the semis and this finals, but um, I stuck with the same line, changed my lenses because yeah, light got a bit flat, but so fun out there getting some face shots. Well, congratulations, Zoe Sadowski, Sinnet, TAE Technologies Natural Selection winner at Bald Face Lodge. Well done, Zoe. Thank you very much. You have to love her throwing in so much fun, getting some face shots, like she's just a casual powder day as she's champion here at Bald Face Lodge. Incredible. We still have the men's final run coming up. Stay with us. All right, guys, third competitor, Leanne Pelosi. We were joking in the car on the way here that it was like the natural labyrinth because it's like, there's so many trees to navigate. It's kind of rocky, kind of gnarly. It's in like the Narnia zone. <laughs> It'll be like a success getting to the bottom. See that little booter right there? It just doesn't look like big enough. 
Pelosi dropping in three, two, one. Rihanna on course, on course. There she is. You must have died. Oh my god. Welcome back to the TAE Natural Selection at Baldface. Stop two here in our 2022 season. And this is it, our final runs of this event. We will be crowning a men's champion, Mikkel Bang, currently in the lead with that score of a 75. He knows that that's too much room for Dustin Craven, so he will look to do more. This angle really shows how steep that drop-in is. As Mikkel heads down course, Looks like he's gonna go to this same line that he took during his first run in finals. Beautifully touching down and finding that transition. Cutting across the side hill. And are we gonna see him launch that front side seven again? <laughs> Perfect, it's flawless. Again. Oh! Oh! Oh my God. Okay, he's up and riding. That is, that is good. That was uh, very unexpected. It looks like he just must have hit some sort of maybe crust under the snow or something like that. His nose went under. And then I'm just gonna do a double poke backside 180 after I just got inside a, a, a car crash on Scary Cherry. Holy shit! The back protector saved me! Dude, you good? I'm good. Lumberjack, kinda. Ow! I'm fine. Like, I'm fine, dude. You heard Mikkel reference the back protector. All of the riders are oh. wearing the POC back Jesus, protectors. I mean, we heard the impact of the of the crash, but him saying that right off the bat makes us appreciate what that was. Obviously, dislodging the tree. We'll see what happened in the replay. Glad that he is okay as Dustin Craven heads in next. Remember, Micklebang has that score of a 75. The only way that Dustin Craven could possibly become champ here at Baldface Lodge is to beat that number. Does he still have it in him? He has risen to the occasion in every round. And he sent it so deep in his first run. Getting the tail tap in before touching down, holding onto that landing. It's a good start. Indeed. As he comes in with a 180, all day showing us his switch riding skills in powder. Difficult to do in perfect snow conditions. It shows that much more control 
and ability in these type of conditions, and the judges won't ignore it. 100%. And getting that cab five. No problem there from Craven. And backing that up with a front side 360, touching the hand a little bit, but really, that's looking good. One more hit, what's he gonna put down? And a method. That is a run right there. Why not a method to end it? A great run, that, the, the strength of that tail tap. Good job out there. <laughs> That really set the tone for what was really a pretty flawless run. Exactly. I mean, Dustin Craven, he was the winner at Bald Face Valhalla last year. So I'm sure he would love to add this one to his list. Like like the wood. Oh, no way. get high enough. And let's look again at these two runs. First, we have Mikkel Bang finding that transition so beautifully on that transfer. And then just, you know, getting that front seven probably even nicer than the one before it. So big, so powerful. And then this is where it happened. He just caught his nose as hard as he could. And then his back takes out that tree. And he said right off the bat, the back protector saved me. I mean, my stomach was in my throat watching that. And then beautiful backside 180. And of course we have the Canadian Dustin Craven starting things off with that tail bonk. Getting, just getting that tap in right there on the edge of that wooden structure. Not easy. And you mentioned again, local boy from right next door in Revelstoke, he knows this snow. And there's that cab five getting around. Look at that landing. It was great, wheeled a little bit, and then pulled it together. And a front side three. Really the icing on that run, I feel like. Yeah, the method at the end, waving to the crowd. Is that going to be enough to take out Mickel Bangs? 75. Yo, I broke a tree. And it is Dustin Craven with an 85.33. Dustin Craven has won the TAE Natural Selection at Bald Face Lodge. Stop. This is incredible. Oh my God. Dustin Craven, he is a legend in his own right. Arguably yeah. has the sharpest wit Good in running. all of snowboarding, and now Open he bar. is the natural selection <laughs> champion at Baldface. With consistency Dude. all day, a 91.33 in run two, a 92.33 to come back and beat Travis Rice. What a moment, and he's with T-Bird now. All right, we're here with the winner of the TAE Technologies Baldface natural selection, Dustin Craven. Dustin, that was a battle for the ages. Uh, yeah, it was tough. I mean, every run got harder, more tracked, but it's, you know, it just brings the competitor out of everyone. Everyone tries so hard. It was so sick to see. It's like, if you asked me three days ago if anything like crazy like that was going to happen, I would have said no, and it kind of blew my mind, so. Rumor has it earlier today, a couple, couple people overheard you say, I wasn't prepared for any of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, I wasn't prepared to make it into finals, and I was just like, all right, wing it. Dude, I'm so proud of you. We love you, buddy. Congratulations. Thank Let's you. enjoy it tonight, huh? The moral of the story, plan less, wing it more, and you can be a winner like Dustin Craven. We got awards to give away when we come back as the riders head back to the lodge. Stay with us. Okay, you guys can get the drones in the air. Stand by, I'm just gonna get Dustin in position and get him strapped in and then we'll be ready to go. Dustin Craven dropping in three, two, one. Craven on course.
Welcome back to our Natural Reflections post show brought to you by Thule. Before we get into the awards, how about we look at uh, some of the highlights of this historical day, Mary? First off, our run of the day. And run of the day goes to a natural selection veteran, Mr. Ben Ferguson out of Bend, Oregon, putting down his effortless and technical style on Scary Cherry. Highest score of the day with this backside 360 with the nose tap on that pillow tower, which we didn't realize until we saw it in slow motion. He absolutely attacked this thing ferociously. And that 360 in the middle of his run, I mean, that was just phenomenal. Yeah, Ferguson was in the zone. And this is when you get to watch, you know, a really talented rider with just pure joy. Totally. This run showed us what natural selection is encapsulated in one top to bottom go. And then it's our winning runs from the final. First up, we'll start with Zoe Sadowski Sinat, who just can't seem to do any wrong right now. She is in the zone. Whenever Zoe drops in, she is just setting the pace. She is explosive and she showed us no less on her very final run down Scary Cherry. We thought that this might be a, a victory lap of sorts, but she said, no, it'll be more than that. It'll be my best run of the day. Getting that front side 360 in. And every time I watch Zoe do something like this, I just think, okay, this is just a foreshadowing of what she's gonna do at the next event. Yeah, again, at 20 years old, having all of the fun, with that backflip each time, she landed it perfectly. And you heard it in her interview with T-Bird. All she talked about was that she was getting great powder turns and face shots. And you're like, oh, really? That was a highlight of your run? <laughs> but that's, you know, it, it speaks again to, to that joy these athletes have riding at the highest level here at Natural Selection. Definitely. And on the men's side, Revel Stokes, Dustin Craven coming down also with his final run of the day, tapping that tower with his tail and just sending it all day long. Again, coming from behind, you know, and that, the pressure, first time in this situation, needing to take out Mikkel Bang, who he has an immense amount of respect for, and just casually came in and said, I'm just gonna have some fun. You know, T-Bird said it best when we were in Jackson, Dustin Craven, is a hell for leather snowboarder, and we saw that in pure form today. He said, I didn't have a plan, just had to wing it. And you know, watch out, Travis Rice, because you're never going to hear the end of this now. <laughs> what a day, what a day, what a day. As the riders gather around the front of Boldface Lodge, we will throw it down to T Bird for our awards ceremony. All right, the event went off today without a hitch. We are back at the beautiful lodge at Baldface in Canada for the TAE Natural Selection. We are about to crown the winners of the event, the men's and women's podium. But first, we are going to bring up the founder of Baldface, Mr. Jeff Pensiero, with a special announcement. Uh, Robin, come up here. Blake, come up here. The uh, first award we wanted to give was to both of you. You did so great today. It was so fun watching you. And we want to invite you over to Valhalla next year for a couple few days with your parents or your uh, siblings. Thank you. Something like that. You guys were awesome. Love having you. You're the best. Can't wait to spend more time with you. Right on. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. What a great day. You're amazing. Everybody was amazing today. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. All right. And before we get into the top three men and the top three women, 
we're gonna give out a special prize. It's called the Quicksilver Surf the Mountain Award. It goes to the one rider who epitomized style, fluidity, grace, and power when approaching their line. And they're gonna win a custom MR surfboard. And that rider who's taking that surfboard home is Francis Marion Hardy. <laughs> Marion, how are you feeling about today? I don't know, I have no words. It's so cool, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for everything, seriously. Give it up for Marion Hardy. <laughs> now we are going to get into the top three men and the top three women from the TAE Natural Selection in Bald Face, starting off with the gals. All of the women absolutely destroyed the course today. It was a history-making day, as it was the first time these women have ever ridden and competed on Scary Cherry. So one thing to note is the top male and the top female from this event are gonna take home a 2023 Ski-Doo snowmobile. So that's pretty big time news. So let's kick it off with the gals. In third place, we just saw her take home a surfboard from Chamonix, France, Marion Hardy. Yeah. In second place, coming out of South Lake Tahoe, Nevada, give it up for Elena Hyde. And in first place, she is officially taking over women's competitive snowboarding from Wanaka, New Zealand, Zoe Sadowski Sinai. All right, and now we are going to get into the men's podium, starting off with third place. Everybody knows this guy, he needs no introduction. Arguably the most influential and greatest backcountry snowboarder to ever live from Jackson Hole, Wyoming, Mr. Travis Rice. <laughs> All right, now getting into second place. I like to refer to him as every pro snowboarder's favorite pro snowboarder from Oslo, Norway, Mikkel Bang. And now, the number one finisher, first place at the TAE Natural Selection in bald face from Revelstoke, British Columbia, Dustin Craven. <laughs> Mary, it has been my high honor to story tell such a legendary day in backcountry competitive snowboarding. I mean, what we saw here was truly for the ages. The feeling is mutual and I completely agree. What makes me so excited going into every stop of nat the Natural Selection Tour is that all the riders are so good. You truly never know who will stand on the podium when all is said and done. Yeah, it is the any given Sunday of snowboarding events and to see you know, when I look at Travis Rice there, you, you got to remember, like, we're watching Travis in such a 
incredible part of his career. You know, about to be 40 years of age, still on the podium, on the event that he helped create. And then you have Dustin Craven, who never thought that he would be on a podium like this here at Natural Selection with Mikkel Bang, who we've been watching since he was 12. Then there's Zoe sadowski Sinat and, and her taking of the torch for the future. And look at how we got here. I mean, look at these brackets. It's truly incredible. We started with nine of the most talented backcountry riders on the men's side and throughout the day whittled it down to one person, Dustin Craven, on top of the podium. And with the, the five women, I mean, fighting for those four spots, we knew it would be tough, but I mean, they not one woman ever backed down. And we are excited for what this means for our road to Alaska, the mighty Tordrillo Mountain Range. We will be there in a few weeks to crown an overall tour champion and see this thing elevated into really what it is, the infinity aspect of backcountry big mountain riding. Eight men, four women, and now we have a proper tour. Points earned from Jackson, from Baldface, and now at Alaska, the overall tour champions will be crowned from the culmination of those three stops. I cannot wait. This is definitely not going to disappoint. Make sure that you join us in Tordrillo for this exciting finish of the 2022 season of the Natural Selection Tour. My name is Salema Masakella, Mary Walsh. As I said before, it has been an honor. Also, thanks to the third member of our team, the one and only T-Bird Tom Monterosso. Look at all that joy. This is the beauty of snowboarding. If you get a chance out there to go out and make some turns, do so in the spirit of this community, and we will see you in Alaska. Sadowski Sinai in bald face from Revelstoke, British Columbia, Dustin 